Can we do a test one, one, one?
The Avalon Nightclub in Hollywood, California, where we proudly present the fifth installment of the Hollywood Fight Night series. I'm Doug Fisher, editor-in-chief of Ring Magazine, and with me, a man needing no introduction to any well-versed, intelligent boxing fan, former WBC featherweight champion, the Flesh and Flash, Kevin Kelly. I'm so glad you're here with me. We're going to be commentating on five fights tonight on this show. In the main event, however, we have two female fighters, middleweights, with something to prove. Maricela Cornejo, she's coming off her first loss, which was on national television last September. And Erin Tohill, who is unretired just for this fight. Kevin, she hasn't fought since 2006 in a boxing ring. Tell us how these women match up. Well, both of them seem to appear to be girls of desperation right now. They both need a win. Somebody comes out of retirement to fight you, they, they may see something that they can capitalize off to win. But the question mark is, does she have enough to win? Now, in the co-featured bout, we have a New York City amateur standout named Brian Ceballo. He is 6-0. and He's a welterweight like you. He was a, a New York City Golden, Golden Gloves, Gloves winner. He was also national Golden Gloves, U.S. Golden Glo I mean, sorry, U.S. national champ. He's proven himself as an amateur now. He's proven himself as a professional. I'm very curious as to your take on Ceballos' progression as a pro. Well, he, he, you know, he's coming along right. Management is utilizing him properly, placing him right. I mean, they look at the record of the opponent, eight wins, seven losses. They're trying to bring him along. But the right, opponent. That's, that's Randy Fuentes. Randy Fuentes. The southpaw like you. Very dangerous. Yes. This, I expect a very good fight out of him. Randy Fuentes, I watched him and studied him. He's a come forward kind of guy. He keeps coming forward. Um, he's a lefty. Yeah, and very compact. Well, compact so and we're strong. Gonna Somebody see, who can carry even heavier weight. We're going to see how well Brian reacts to being a south, fighting a southpaw. I'm sure he faced some of the amateurs, but the pros are a little bit different. So those are the two co featured bouts Cornejo, Towhill and Ceballo Fuentes. We have three other bouts. We'll get to know those guys a little bit more as the fights happen. Um, they're, they're kids. There's not a whole lot to say about them preceding the fights. We're gonna learn about them during the fight. So this is a club show. We're in the Avalon. It's a great atmosphere. Everyone's here to have a good time. If you're watching this stream, just chill out, relax. If you wanna at me, uh, at Dougie Fisher on Twitter. If you have questions for the champ, Please send them my way. I'll, uh, I'm not very good at uh, multitasking with the social media, but I'll try during the stream. We're going to have a lot of fun with this. This is not one of those huge productions where they have like seven or eight commentators. It's just me. It's Kevin Kelly. And our hostess with the most is the lovely Cynthia Conti, who was with 360's promotions promoter, Tom Loeffler. Well, 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 Tom Loeffler again. Look at this, we're here on a Sunday for Hollywood Fight Nights. Welcome everyone joining. Kevin Kelly, welcome to the team. There you guys go. Here we are, look at, we're here Tom. This is the fifth installment of Hollywood Fight Nights. How exciting is this? The first of 2019. It's great to be back here in 2019. Avalon Hollywood, the Hollywood Fight Nights. We've got some great fights tonight. Kevin Kelly, like you said, is part of the team. Doug Fisher. You're the hostess with the mostest, so we're happy to have everyone back. We're happy the fans are here in attendance, and we're gonna have some great fights tonight. And tonight, the fights are fire, because the main event I already love, because Erin Towhill is here not to lose, so she's gonna be kicking some ass. That's all I can say. Can I say that? I hope not. I can, I can say that. I can say whatever. Anyways, let's go down this card real fast. Let's talk about it. We got two kids making their U.S. debuts. We got George Navarro, he's on the show. All the family and fans are here. George has a lot of fans out here. Christian Robles has a lot of fans out here. Alberto, Alberto uh, Tito Felix Jr., he's coming out. Um, who else? Oh, Maricela, the main event. Maricela, Maricela. La Diva Cornejo. Against Maricela, against uh, Aaron Tohill. That's a local rivalry. Main event, two female fighters. They're going to put it on the line. It's going to be a great fight. And then Brian Ceballo flew all the way out. Brian Ceballo, all the way out from New York, is fighting Wendy, Randy Fuentes from Texas. So that's that's going to be a great fight. Oh, yeah, he's making he made his pro debut here at Hollywood Fight Nights, the very first Hollywood Fight Nights, and he's intending to keep that undefeated record here. Hitman wants that. Hitman wants to give him his first loss. So this is going to be a very fun night of fights. 
If you guys are still, you guys come and watch it. We're here still at Avalon. If not, tell all your friends. Tune in right now, 360 Promotions, because it's gonna be a fun fight. 360 Promotions.us. Gotta get that. Now, um, any special celebrities coming here tonight? Oh, we got, we got a couple of world-class trainers. Abel Sanchez is gonna be here in the house. Okay. And Eddie Reynoso is gonna be here in the house. So. Oh. We got that rivalry going, but uh, look, we, we, we welcome everyone here, and it's gonna, be, it's gonna be fun. When you have those two, does that mean there could be a possible third rematch no, no, down the line? No, they're just coming. I am asking out. for you fans. They're just coming to hang out and, and watch the fights. Layla Ali might come down to support the female fight, so she's, she's a potential, and you know, it's, uh, it's gonna be a fun night, fun atmosphere tonight. Okay, good, well, I can't wait. Kevin, Dougie, I can't wait to see what you guys have in store for us, because Kevin, I know you're gonna throw, you're gonna throw some hands with uh, Dougie. Show him a little something. All right, back to you guys. <laughs> All right, thank you very much, Cynthia. Do not actually hit me. Just, no, you know, I'll you promise. can show me technique. Um, but our first bout of the evening has, uh, is about ready to kick off. This is Alberto Felix versus Cody Sessions. Junior featherweights, four rounds of action. We throw to our intrepid ring announcer, Joe Martinez. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we are set to go from the Avalon here in Hollywood, California. It's Hollywood Fight Nights brought to you by Tom Loeffler's 360 Promotions and presented by Tecate, the official bear of boxing. Our first bout tonight, four rounds in the Super Bantamweight division and making his way to the ring first from Riverside, California. Out of the red corner, here is Cody Session. Finally get to the blue corner, sent to make his ring walk out of Ontario, California, undefeated Tito Felix Jr. <laughs> And all five fans, we are set to go once again. Four rounds this scheduled in the Super Bantamweight division. Introducing to you first, finding out of the red corner. Wearing solid black trunks, he weighed in officially 122 pounds. He enters the ring tonight for the second time as a professional from Riverside, California. Here is Cody Session. <laughs> and across the ring, his opponent finding out of the blue corner. Wearing tonight yellow and black, trimmed in gray, he weighed in 121 and one quarter pounds. In two professional bouts, he stands perfect with two victories. 
no debates. One win coming by way of knockout from Ontario, California. Here is the undefeated Super Bantamweight, Alberto Chico Felix Jr. And your referee in charge of the action is Wayne Hedgeman. Instructions in the dressing room, obey my commands at all times, and above all, protect yourself. Touch him up. Yep. Well, let me take a look at who's taller. A good reach by Cody Sessions, and that's what he needs. Uh, that reach on the outside is a martial artist, and that reach to see if he takes advantage of it. Or is he going to fight the fight of his opponent? You never fight your opponent's kind of fight. You always got to fight your fight. Sessions is wasting no time here getting the fight started. Oh, and he connected with the right hand. Well, the one thing about Sessions, he's a uh, MMA fighter. Right. Uh, he has a lot of MMA experience. And um, he doesn't believe, you know, his record is deceiving. And, you know, as much as you believe, you have to believe what your opponent is shopping and selling in order for your opponent to win. And Sessions don't believe that. Right. So Sessions' boxing record as a professional is 0-1. and one. He's just got one fight. It's a loss. His MMA record, however, he boasts a 15-5-1 and one record. But if you look and at the it, fight, you know. What do you, tell me what you think of his style, though. I mean, is is. Everything's hard. Does he have a style? Does he, he have a boxing style yet? <laughs> Not yet. He doesn't know about a jab. Um, there's some things he got to work on. Like, right there should be a jab. There goes jab. He throws yeah, one. It's not bad. Um, but he's moving too much. And as he goes later in rounds uh, and later in his career, he's going to have problems with, with cardiovascular. You get tired quick like that. Like I said, he's throwing nice body shots. Uh, right now, I'm giving him the round. He's doing very well. Um, it's a four-rounder. So realistically, you have to win those early rounds. Yeah, I agree. Just based on that uh, right hand that he connected with earlier in the round. I've got this uh, Sessions winning so far, and it's saying a lot because Felix is somebody who had an early start in boxing. He had 24 amateur bouts. Yeah, I mean, uh, Sessions you, you can tell he's, 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 he's the guy who's got uh, the more, the more well-schooled boxing foundation. Stay light, Tito. Stay light. Yeah, we're going to see what happens with all that expended energy that, he, that Sessions just did. He spends a lot of energy, but as we go in round two and three, that's where the fight settles in. Um, Sessions doing very hard shots. He's creating a lot of energy. Um, we're going to see what damage is as it goes to the second round. Sessions looks a lot heavier than Felix does. Yeah, if he knows. I know they weighed in about the same, but it, it, it looks like Sessions is rehydrated to be a, a, a bigger man. He's a big guy. He's a lot bigger for that weight class. But, um, he doesn't utilize his jab that much as he should still on the outside. And, you know, everything's a power shot by Sessions. Yeah, that was a right hand from Felix. It landed on the ear of Sessions, and Sessions' legs were momentarily wobbling. We'll see if Felix has found something with the right hand in the second round. Yeah, yeah. Be sure to fill out your entry form and a chance to win a special prize tonight from 360 Promotions. On your seats, you'll find your entry form. Fill those out, and the ring card models will be coming around later on to pick those up. You can't win if you don't enter, so fill it out now and get ready to turn it in. Round two, Alberto Felix versus Cody Sessions. Four rounds in the junior featherweight division. Kelly, who'd you score the opening round to? I gave that round to Cody Sessions. 
um, stronger punches, more aggression, get him, get him, get him, get him. Uh, more activity. Uh, we're going to see how the energy carries over as the, the fight goes on, especially in the later rounds. Um, right now, Felix does have an amateur pedigree. We're going to see if he picks it up. He's starting to pick it up. And um, going to the body is a great thing for Felix. Um, it's just turned into a real good draw. Yeah, I thought the opening round had a brisk pace. I agree with you. Um, I scored the first round for Sessions. He was using his, uh, his man strength. He's definitely the more mature, more mature physically of the two. But towards the end of the opening round, Felix found range with his right hand. And now we're seeing some body shots, as you noticed, in round two. A nice hook for Felix. Another hook for Felix. Once you come we see Felix putting the punches together. And we're seated right in front of Felix's family, so it's very loud in this uh, red corner right now. I like what they see from the young man. Felix landing overhand right. I think he's smothering his punches right now. Yeah, he's definitely smothering punches. He can get some, just a little bit of space. He's got to know reach and range. You know, he's early on in his career right now. He's got to learn range. How to come up a jab. Right now he's smothering himself. He's got to learn how to use his jab. I'll tell you what, Kevin. Session seems okay to me. It seems a little bit premature, but he's not complaining too much. Yeah, he seems a little bit. He's, he seems so bewildered right now. He's saying he's not hurt. But yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know. The action, they, see, a certain amount of punches got to happen. As you take a look, right here, you know, those punches are clean. They're clean. They're crisp. And he's landing those shots. The referee's got to watch, you know, what damage those punches for. One-two combination, see. followed by a stiff jab, and it, and it pushes Sessions yeah. into his own corner. Yeah, no punches Fight. back. Yeah, that's true. He wasn't fighting back. Wasn't fighting maybe back. he was overwhelmed. He should have just threw something out there so the referee knew that he was okay. But he threw nothing back, so the referee stopped it. And I think that speaks to Sessions' lack of boxing experience, not knowing what to do in that situation. Yes, definitely. Boxing is something you can't play boxing. You got to do boxing. And the thing is that, that Session doesn't understand that yet. So it'll be a matter of time. I think a few more fights. He might actually improve. I think I like, I like his height. I like his reach. I like his attack. I do too. I, I, yeah, he's got, he's got fighting spirit. There's some potential there. I thought he did well in the first round. Credit to, to Alberto Felix for coming back as strong as he did in round two. Yeah, he did a smart thing. The first round, he just watched what Session did, and then he came back and had an answer for it. And that's what, that's what, that's what the corner, I said, that's the corner work. That's what they tell them to do. Go to the body. Slow him down. Where does Alberto Felix need to improve? Distance. That's the only thing I've seen tonight was distance. He needs to come behind a jab when he gets the man hurt. Don't rush in like he did. That's very dangerous. Other than that, I think over time will tell. He'll improve. He'll get better. Um, it seems like he's, you know, he's a good fighter. He's actually a decent fighter. He had a hand of adversity tonight, and he did. All right. Well, it looks like our ring announcer, Joe Martinez, is ready to make the official announcement of this verdict. Ladies and gentlemen, the end comes to the official time. One minute, 46 seconds. Round number two, referee Wayne Hedgepath puts a halt to the bout for your winner by KO and still undefeated, Alberto Tito Felix Jr. Still, congratulations, and you just made your U.S. debut in front of everyone on Hollywood Fight Nights, in front of your fans, and in front of your family. How do you feel right now? Well, I, I, I don't know. I'm just, I just feel so great. Um, I just want to thank, give a big thanks to God and my family, and you know everybody who supports me. Thank you guys for coming out. 
and you know, supporting the sport just means a lot to me. You know, in the fighter meetings, you did tell me you, you're Keith Thurman. We just saw that you were boxing, you were keeping up that pace. First round, he got you. He was the aggressor. He told me that he was going to push the pace at the beginning. What did you see? What did you see in the first round? What happened there? I don't know. I just wanted to see what he had. I just wanted to taste his power a little bit, see if there's anything there that I should worry about. But in the second round, I, feel, I realized that it, nothing to be concerned about, you know? And then... <laughs> and also, you, in the second round, you caught him with a flurry of punches. You caught him with that right, and then you got him. That stoppage, what did that mean? What did that, what did that mean for you when that ref waved the hand? It meant everything to me, because it's another win, to my, another win in my, my record, you know? So, you know, thank God, again, for, for giving me this opportunity. Do you have a message to your family and your fans for coming out? I love you all. I love you guys so much. Thank you for supporting me. And, well, Viva Mexico! <laughs> congratulations. And congratulations for making your debut tonight on Hollywood Fight Nights and your American debut. Congratulations. You, so you guys, Alberto Felix Jr. or Tito Jr. Tell me. They said it wrong. They, I want to hear it. Al Alberto Jr. Felix. But oh, it's Jr. Felix. Alberto Jr. Felix, but everybody oh. calls me Tito. Okay, well, congratulations, Tito. Give it up for him, guys. Oh. All right, Kevin. So, Alberto Tito Felix moves to 3 0. He's 21 years old. He's headed in the right direction, but. There's a lot to there's a lot of promise to the young man. Tell us the main things you took away from this fight. Well, I took away this fight that he reacted very well in the first round. Um, you know, like I said, he watched his opponent. Okay, watched him very well. He's very smart. But like I said, session in that whole thing was very aggressive, throwing bombs and banging them. But he needs to learn distance with a jab. Right. And he's trying to control your your opponent with a jab. That's what's missing these days. The jab. These guys don't jab a lot. But they need to go into jab sessions. That's what I would give him. Jabbing, keep your distance. But yeah, the jabbing will help establish his distance yes. and set up those power shots so he's not yes. smothering when he's being aggressive. Or headbutt. Yeah. yeah. Even early on, headbutt. You get a cut early in the fight, it changed the whole demographic of the fight. Yeah, I like I like his youthful enthusiasm. Yeah. I can't wait to see him fight again. Um, I wouldn't mind seeing Cody Sessions fight again. He's got a lot of yes. spi uh, spirit. Uh, just needs some uh, technical in improvements. Yes. Um, but going forward, yeah, uh, Felix, there's something to work with there. Um, going yeah. into our second bout of the evening, we have George Navarro from Los Angeles. He's 3-0-1. He's going to be going up against Anthony Torres. This is in the Bantamweight division, the 118-pound weight class. Um, I don't know a whole lot about George Navarro, uh, but he does have an amateur background. He is from L.A., but this is his first fight in the U.S. He's a young guy, so he went to Mexico for his first four fights. Well, a lot of careers are groomed in Mexico. I mean, look, Chavez came in, what, 80 fights for Mexico, right? Um, you get a lot of work in Mexico. They're grooming. And, and the farming system, they call it in boxing, where you, you stay in one location, and they're bringing opponents to you to build your record up so you can fight. Yeah, and you can, if you want to have a lot of fights early yes. in your career, sometimes that's the way to do it because maybe the boxing infrastructure of your town or your region of the world Definitely. just doesn't have enough club shows. You know, so enough. you've got the opportunity to go to another country where there's a lot of shows. Yeah. Regardless of the level of competition, you're getting that fight experience. It's you called know, farming. I looked at your record uh, a couple days ago, and uh, I noticed that the first 10 fights of your pro career. We're at the Felt Forum, yes. uh, the small theater. Now it's the Hulu Theater yeah. in Madison Square Garden. And after those first 10 fights, you had a lot of fights, all the way up to your 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 world title shot that were in hotels. Yes. That were like ballroom fights. Yes. But you had a lot of fights yes. before you, you fought for the world title. Tell us about how important that is to get that experience and, and what it's like, you know, even for like a, an amateur standout like yourself, Fighting in sort of the club fight series or a, a, yeah. a, a ballroom. The more you practice anything, the better you get at it. Right. The thing is, that's what theory is. Why train all the time for months and months and months and no fight, and then go in the same scenario? You want to fight and use your fights and stay in shape and then fight again. I fought twice in the same week. 
I fought Monday and Friday on my record too. You missed that. What? Yeah. Well, what year was that? Oh, uh, that was actually in '89, I believe it was. Oh, so you're going way, yeah. way, way back. So <laughs> the thing with me, I want to stay as busy as possible. Right. Because you're as good as your craft, and if you're winning fights, think about it. You train for two months, you knock a guy out in 30 seconds or a minute, and then you're gonna take a break for two or three months. Right. Utilize that time because you forget what you did good in the last fight or a mistake. If you made a mistake, you can correct it right away. You know, I think it, it also saves fighters from the wear and tear of sparring. Yes. Because if you're only fighting a couple times a year, when you get back into the gym, you yes. got to not just get back into physical condition, but you have to get that boxing timing again, and you yes. do that through sparring. But, you know, just because the gloves are big and you have headgear on doesn't yes. mean your brain isn't shaking around in your head. You yes. can still get a minor concussion. You still True. get wear and tear on your body, not just your brain through all those rounds of sparring. So I yeah. got to figure, if you're going to take punishment, do it in an actual prize fight where you're getting paid. And as you say, use your fights to keep you sharp. Yeah. And learn exactly. fight to fight rather than in sparring. Because you don't yeah. get a whole lot of credit for the sparring yeah. session. Plus the sparring wears on your body. So the thing is, like I said, I would get ready for a fight and me and my trainer Phil Borgia would have to go back in the gym and let's train for this fight. I was always training, so let's let's fight two or three times in a month. It's better than fighting one time in a month and fighting the off two months. Doesn't make sense. So was that your what your trainer wanted, or was that what your management wanted, or Whole what team. you? Okay. I was part of that. My trainer manager at the time was Bill Bykoff, uh, who became the owner of Vitamin Water, and my trainer Phil Borgia. We wanted to stay consistent. You know, if you got a craft, you train for a fight. I like to always train anyway, so I would train back to back to back to back. Let's fight. If I get two fights, three fights in a row, let's go. Right. Because if I knock a guy out in the first round, we ready to fight next month, next week. Right. Right? Why wait a month or two months? So two questions. What was the most you fought in one year's time, in one calendar year, and how many fights did you have, or what was your record when you first challenged for a world title? Well, back then it was it, more, it was easier. It was a lot of farming. Right. Um, That doesn't exist now. I think the most I fought... And one year, probably was 14 times or maybe 12. As Goodness you know. gracious. So you were fighting uh, every month. Oh, we were, yeah. Because the garden, the Mad Square Garden had a had a place we could farm. They had fights right there every month. Yeah, and the Felt Forum, they were going, yeah, they were yes. regular shows. And it looks like Joe Martinez is ready to announce our second fight of this evening. Once again, it's George Navarro versus Anthony Torres. Bantam weights, four rounds or less. Let's go ahead and toss it up to Joe Martinez. And now, five fans, we are set to go with the next bout tonight. Four rounds, bantamweight action, and set to make his ring walk from Visalia, California. Here is Anthony Torres. And his opponent is ready to go out of the blue corner from Los Angeles, California. Here is the unbeaten George Navarro.
Once again, fight fans, we are set to go with the next bout tonight. Four rounds scheduled. This in the Bantamweight division. Introducing to you first, fighting out of the red corner. Wearing red and black, he weighed in 116 and three quarter pounds. He enters the ring tonight for the third time as a professional, hailing from Visalia, California. Here is Anthony Torres. And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the blue corner. Wearing blue and black, he weighed in 116 and one half pounds. In four professional bouts, he is unbeaten with three victories, including one knockout, no defeats, and one bout even. Fighting out of and representing the city of angels, will sign here is the All right, gentlemen, you received the instructions in the dressing room. You know what I expect? A good, clean fight. Legal punches here for you. Legal punches here for you. Touch gloves to let the both of you. Well, here we look at the tiller of the tape. 5'9", Jorge Navarro. 5'6", so three-inch reach advantage, okay, being that tall, right? Not bad for the weight class. That's what we're looking at. Now, five nine is tall for bantamweight. Yeah, I mean, and, and Navarro's also the man with the the age and youth, but or so one, we think. But there's one twenty thing, to thirty one. But there's also one thing that Torres has. He's a southpaw. So let's see if that throws Navarro. These guys are coming out swinging. No feeling out process so far. Yeah, it's too early, I think, to throw punches, power punches that early, um, especially against a southpaw. Kevin, you said you spoke to Torres before this fight. Uh, what did you learn about him? Well, Torres is an uh, MMA fighter. He's very good at wrestling. He said he did wrestling for many, many years and excelled in it. Nice. He's doing okay with boxing. Yeah, he's, he's, land, he's landed uh, his left. Swinging a little bit wild, but he, he landed a left uppercut, and he's landed a couple straight lefts. Well, remember the rule. You only are open when you're throwing punches. So what happens in boxing is a self-defense sport. So when your man throws his punches, that's when he's open. But that's what's happening with Navarro. Navarro throwing wild punches, a little bit wide. Um, and he's, Torres is taking advantage of it. And Navarro had an early start in boxing. Didn't have an extensive amateur career, but he had 30 amateur bouts with a 25-5 and five record. He describes himself as a switch hitter. But so far, he's boxing out of an orthodox stance. Oh, it's a nice straight right from Torres. I'm sorry, from Navarro. Yeah, Navarro, he's has to loop that shot. He's fighting a southpaw. They say the way to hit a southpaw is with a straight right hand. Um, it depends on the footwork. If you look at the feet, or if you can catch him on camera, um, Torres's right foot has got to be outside the left foot of Navarro, and vice versa. Is Navarro doing a good job of that? Doesn't look like he's, he's doing it right now. Right now, the, the wide right hand is, is telegraphed. He needs to throw it straight. And Torres doing a good job of uh, making a miss. So during the tell of the tape, I said that the age advantage went to Navarro being 20 years old and his opponent being 31, but maybe it's not an advantage. Maybe he's, he's, he's very young. He's, he's young and he's, he's, he's obviously still learning. Yeah, and obviously still, you know, still makes mistakes despite uh, an unbeaten record, 3-0-1. Oh, well, it's not going to be a punch. We're going to see what happens if this fight goes into the second and third round. Because um, Torres threw some haymaker. <laughs> and those take a lot out of you. The well-timed right to the body from Navarro. Yeah, Navarro, that's where he's got to go downstairs. That's the one thing that might be missing out of his style. Here you go. Here you go. Here you go. Stop.
Round two, George Navarro in the blue corner versus Anthony Torres in the red corner. Very hotly contested opening round. Who'd you score it for? I gave that round to Anthony Torres. Um, he's more aggressive. Um, I believe George Navarro's undefeated, but you know he's got to gain his range. There's no jab. He's, he's very wide with his right hand. A little wiry, a little bit of wildness. Um, he's got to be more control. Everything off a jab. That's what's missing right now. He's got a jab and then throw his combination and jab throws combination. A uh, good right hand back to the jab, but he's waiting. And then Torres right now, unless he's a fatigue or tired, he's not taking advantage of the situation. I get the feeling that uh, Navarro felt that maybe he lost that opening round and wants to come right back, be aggressive, and, and regain his momentum. Yeah, just you can't, yeah, listen, you can't afford to give away rounds in a four-round bout. You ain't lying about that. And let me tell you something. <laughs> I think Torres, those body shots he just got hit with, seeing that Navarro started to notice the body shots, there go again. I think Navarro's right to the body so far is his best punch of this fight. And he's right now and he's, he keeps going back down to it, so he's discovered something, and now he's putting a left hand behind it. There's a left to the body from Navarro. There's a, oh, was that a little bit low? That's I couldn't like, tell. It seemed like it hit his ankle. Yeah. <laughs> it was. I'll tell you. Referee Raul Caiz Jr. did not see it. Oh, Torres is hurt. Like I said, the body shot. He noticed the body shot. That took a lot out of Torres. Uh, uh, Caiz Jr. is not counting. Maybe it was a maybe it was a low blow. He's giving him time to recover. So perhaps the punch that put Torres down was a foul. That's got to be it. Otherwise, Caiz would be counting. I tell you, Navarro's well into the body. Let's oh, let's see if he gives him a warning. And he definitely was giving him a stern warning. Oh, that was a left hook that put Torres down. And Torres is really shook up from that punch. Torres struggles to his feet. Is he fit to go? Great. Can he make it? Wow. Caiz Jr. is going to give him a shot. And Navarro was trying to swarm him, looking to overwhelm him. Shots to the body. I'll tell you what, Navarro is probably going to get him out of here, but he is, he is swinging really wild. Yeah, that's the thing. He's got a little control. When you got your man hurt, you got a little control. Torres can barely stand. If you can't stand, you can't defend yourself. Torres got to know how to grab. Yeah, grab he, on a hold. Grab on a hold. Survive the technique. You, know, you, you would think a wrestler would, would know how to do that. Yeah. And the fight is over. 25 seconds left in round two. George Navarro showing he can dig deep. And listen to the crowd. They really respond to him. I tell you what, I look at his hair and his face and the way he entered the ring with the uh, the black sombrero and the black poncho reminded me of those Mexican bantamweight idols of the past, guys like Ruben Olivares and yeah. Carlos, uh, Carlos Zarate. These guys are Hall of Famers, all-time greats. He's, yeah, Navarro has the, the body type of a Zarate. He I'm does. Not, obviously, I'm not comparing him to the great Zarate, but I'm saying, He's got that height and that reach and that tall explosiveness of uh, a Carlos Navarro. Yeah, the and, only uh, thing fans, is, fans in LA are gonna they're yeah. gonna really be attracted to that. He wins those shots, so he's gotta learn they hard. But as people watch a video, guys gonna capitalize off those wide punches. They telegraph a little bit. He's gotta shorten his shots up a little bit, and he'll be perfect with those. Those shots, he goes to the body very, very well. I like that. Um, when he smells blood, he sinks in. So very, very good. He's got a good face, good smile. He's got an entertaining style. A decent, a solid foundation, but obviously um, there are improvements, technical improvements that he could make. And Torres is not happy with, uh, probably not happy with that low blow and the way things went in round two, because who knows how much those low blows took, took away from Torres before the big left hook put him down and, 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 and seriously scrambled him. Yeah, well, like I said, he was hurt. Torres was hurt, but the, at the end of the day, he was a little bit, you can see the fight start slipping away from Torres. Good to see the respect between the, the Bantamweights. Yeah, well. and, and like I said, here, you take a look at the attack of the barrel body. He was winging shots to the body, relentless body shots. 
And that headshot caught him. That left hook was tremendous. And here this you take a look the, at it. This is the stoppage. The referee saves Torres from himself. And that, that you know, I questioned the, the stoppage in the first bout of the night. I think this was a good stoppage. I just don't believe that, that as game as Torres is, I don't believe he, he had the ability to defend himself. Ladies and gentlemen, the end comes officially. Two minutes, 34 seconds. Round number two, your winner by KO and still undefeated, El Fantasma, George Navarro. All right, well, it looks like uh, Cynthia is ready to interview our, our winner, and he's got, the, he's got the sombrero back on. And like I said, you look at his face, you look at his hair, you look at his style, the way he fights, but the way he carries himself, and it's reminiscent of Mexican boxing idols of the past, particularly the, the, the Bantamweights, because that's the division that he campaigns in. But, I mean, he's got a look of like Mondo Ramos, you know, these guys. Efren Torres, who was a, a flyweight champ, very popular in the U.S. Ricardo well, Lopez also. El Fantasma, yeah. congratulations on your yes. huge win tonight. You just fought in front of your family, in front of your friends, in front of the world. You showed us what, who you were. You said to me, your name, the ghost. You're quiet, you don't talk much, but you're a killer in the ring, and you yeah. proved it tonight. How do you feel right now? I feel really happy, you know. First of all, you know, I want to thank God for this victory. Uh, you know, I want to give a... Special shout out to my opponent for giving me the opportunity to fight you know, in my hometown. You know, I want to thank all my sponsors. I want to thank Ernie, you know, Leonard, you know, uh, Cryo, uh, everybody, you know, like, I'm really happy, you know, for, for his victory, you know, I just look a little bit emotional, you know. But yeah, I want to say thank you all, you know, all my friends and family, you know, that came from Apple Valley. I want to thank, you know, 360 Promotions. I want to thank, you know, Tom Lawford to give me the opportunity. I want to thank Mike, you know, everybody, you know, that wouldn't be possible. Welcome. I'm so, we are so happy. For you. When I interviewed both of you, bo remember I asked, I go, do you know anything about your opponent? And you said, no, just, you know, this, he's, a, he, he's just an MMA fighter. He was an unorthodox southpaw. What, d did that give you difficulty in the ring? Uh, well, like, I didn't find out he was a southpaw until like the last week of my training camp. And like, you know, uh, I started sparring southpaws, but you know, I don't really know, I just came in here, you know, follow the game plan, you know, let my hands go. I don't really like to talk much, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I, we saw that tonight, <laughs> you let your hands do the, do the talking. And in the first round, you hit him, do you, do, you, do you see that he went down? Talk about, can we do a replay by any chance on the first round? Can we show, no? Okay, well then, in the first round, you did a flurry of punches, you did a lot, oh, there it is. Talk about. Yeah. I don't know, you know, I was just letting my hands go, you know, I was, you know, throwing bangs, you know, I just wanted to get them out there, you know. The plan was to get them out in the first round, you know, but it took two rounds, you know. And, but you know, at least I got the job done. Yeah, you did, you did, you gave us a good scrap tonight. You said exactly what you were going to do. You're going to go to the body, 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 work it to the head, and that's exactly what you did tonight. Congratulations to you. You guys, congratulations. Give it up to George Alfantasma in the bottom. doing a raffle so on your seat is a little paper either you don't throw it away because we have goodies for you guys we have a Gennady glove I believe uh, some shirts and hats to give away so please fill it out and give it to the nearest that got the girl that you see oh, over there give it to those ladies because I will be pulling out the ticket in the next or after the next fight some good stuff, guys. Are you guys having fun? <laughs> Are you guys having fun on a Sunday fight nights? It's Hollywood fight nights, guys. Yeah. Are you guys drinking? Hey, they are. Hey, you know what? Who's going to call in Folks are tomorrow? drinking. They are watching some, uh, <laughs> some fun fights. I won't tell anyone. And they might. 
and they have an opportunity right, to win some <laughs> some swag. Why not? And I tell you what, if you can win a Triple G signed glove, that's a big deal. That's hard to get. It's very hard to get. Absolutely. My so, manager has one. I can't get one. <laughs> so George Navarro, he moves to 4-0-1. Uh, I'm going to read a tweet from uh, Latin Box Sports. He says, uh, Navarro set him up with hard body shots that set up the assault on Torres. Do you agree with Latin Box? Was it all about the body attack? Did the body attack open up the headshots that basically ended this fight and, and, and gave Navarro a TKO victory in the second round? It's like I said in the broadcast. I said once he found out that that body shots hurt him, hurt Torres, he stayed straight to the body. Very, very smart. Okay, you got to go where that man hurt. It's called your cleanup. A lot of fighters don't learn that sometimes. Some fighters, they do learn it. But, it's, you know, the longer that Torres went in this fight, the worst Navarro looked. So getting rid of his work, very good. So if you were Navarro's trainer, what would you have told him between rounds one and round two? Well, obviously they told him the right thing. They told him go to the body. All right? It was slow. Yeah, he went to the body yeah. and uh, and below. Yeah, and vicious. <laughs> yeah, and, 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 hit that one slip. I'll let that one slide. I think it might have been more than one slip. Yeah, but, uh, I think he hit him in the ankle. He's young. He's 20 years yeah. old. He was a very enthusiastic, yeah. obviously. He might have broke the foot of Torres. Yes. You know what I mean? But the thing is, he looked really good, I thought. Okay, I think tighten up a little punch a little bit. When you do this, you telegraph. Right. So you need to tighten him up a little bit and use your body, not your arm. So right. if anything that I would tell him, would be tell him that. Right. That's more something that you work on in the gym between exactly. fights than just tell somebody well, during a fight. No, during it's a fight too late. Fight. By the time you get to the fight, you can't say, hey, clean up your technique. No, no, you Shorten them exactly. punches up. If they're, if, they're, if they're wingers, they're wingers. It's got to be in the gym. Calling. Like I said, so if he does watch the footage, right. that's the one advice that I would give him. Shorten your shots a little bit. Don't telegraph them. You go to the body nice. I think you got to be a powerful for a band weight. But you need... To tighten him up a little bit when you go to the body. Yeah, I wonder how long George Navarro can make 118 pounds. He is just 20 years old. He looks big. But if he can make that weight for a while, as you see Team Tito over here, as if he can keep this weight for a while yeah. and get better, I, I think the better your technique is, and you can speak to this, the good. better your power is. Well, I started. I, I often, watching you fight, I often felt like you got a lot of your knockouts, not necessarily from your speed, which was great, and your power, which was very good, it was with your timing. Yeah. You would let yeah. your hands go at the right moment. You would let your hands go as the other guy was getting ready to let his yeah. hands go. You beat him to the punch. What I said earlier. And they, they go to sleep. Throw up, you gotta throw up, let them throw a punch. Boxing is the art of self-defense, like martial arts. Right. When they throw a punch, the only time they open. So I gotta make you throw a punch, and soon I know you're gonna throw it and release it, I'm gonna throw in between that and catch you. Right. Okay, it's, it's very tricky timing. Uh, if you watch James Tony, he was amazing at it. Right. James Tony to me was better than me at the timing. But the thing was, amazing, amazing timing. Floyd has that timing. Sugar right. Ray had that timing. Tommy Hearns to catch the right hand right at the perfect time. Right. You're about to release and there's something too late. Oh, speaking of time, folks are having a good time here. <laughs> You're lying. They're going to have to wait a little bit. That's why party time. Right, right. But the, the, the third bout uh, of, of this broadcast is Christian Robles. He's a super flyweight. Could probably make flyweight against uh, Joel Bermudez. Robles is both trained and managed by Brian Valoria. He was a 2000 U.S. Olympian, uh, and he won titles at 108 pounds and 112 pounds. How familiar with the uh, Hawaiian punch were you? Oh, very well. I commentated him a few times when he fought Chocotito. Oh, wow, okay. Um, That's, that was maybe one of his last fights, as a yes, matter of fact. Yes, um, Probably his last great effort, as a matter so, of fact. That was at Madison Square Garden. Yes. On the and undercard of uh, Gennady Golovkin versus... Curtis, Curtis Stevens? No, no, no. It was. No. I think it was because it was sold out and it was in the big arena. Yeah. It was Gennady Golovkin... Jacobs. No, no, Lemieux. Oh, Lemieux, that was a good fight. That's right. That was a good fight. Yes, it yeah, was. Yeah, Lemieux, because I do so many of Triple G's fights. I do all of them, so... Right. And Tom Loeffler has them, so... I do so many. I'm like, oh, wait. And then sometimes they do a merger. You got Chaka Tito fighting, Triple G fighting. Um, very, very good fight. Uh, Brian Valore, yeah. like I said, you know, Chaka Tito was so busy and just on top of him. He couldn't get away. And very good to help I mean, new young talent bring him up. Very good. I mean, the advice that he's going to get from Brian Valore, oh, right. amazing. Yeah, Valoria from the amateur experience. Amazing. From obviously his professional experience, but also you look at some of the trainers that he's had, 
And I, I believe, I could be wrong, but I'm probably right. Valoria was the first fighter who was trained by Freddie Roach where he went from zero and zero as a pro. So from his pro debut all the way to a world title. Amazing. And Freddie Roach has made his name um, training a lot of great fighters. Manny Pacquiao. Yes. You just mentioned James Tony, yes. But those fighters were developed by other you know, they, they already had fights. They had yeah. already won world titles That's the thing about by the time they had come to Freddie Roach. And, you, you know, saw that with, with Roach. He's very good with guys who are, like, kind of later in their career, like uh, Miguel Cotto. Yes. He had a good run with Miguel Cotto. Obviously, Miguel Cotto already knew how to fight. Uh, but with Brian Valoria, Freddie Roach basically taught him the pro game. Yeah. So Brian Valoria now has that know-how. He has that knowledge of being trained yeah. by a Hall of Fame trainer that he can pass on to Robles. So yeah. I'm very interested in seeing what we, we, we see from Robles. Uh, and I'm really enjoying this card because uh, I, I just, I love the club fight atmosphere. As we talked about earlier, it's so important for these young guys, whether they're a club fighter, like a Cody Sessions or an Anthony Torres, uh, or uh, a, a, an amateur standout like Brian Ceballo, who is now a professional prospect, you have to stay busy to learn your craft yes. and get busy. And I'm wondering if you think if, if, if that's one of the problems with modern fighters now. Yeah. You see a lot of guys. Keith Thurman fought yesterday, yeah. and uh, he hadn't good. fought. Yeah, well, he hadn't fought in 22 months. And I mean, listen, this guy is 28 and 0. He's won two major titles at welterweight, and he went life and death with uh, the Riverside Rocky with with yeah. uh, Josecito Lopez, who a lot of guys feel is kind of past it, you know, a little bit long in the tooth. Uh, but I, I really, I just chalked that up to inactivity. Yeah. Ring well, rust is real, hey. Well, the butcher has to sharpen his knife once a week, right? He's right. cutting the meat. So the same thing happens for everything. Everything is repetition. The more you do something over and over, the better you get at it. Right. Right? And the thing is, you can't sample boxing fights. You can train all the time. Even if your fighter trains in the gym, he trains, 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 trains. But no fight, it's, no, it's not the same. People mistake the training part but the fighting part. Like Sugar Ray, when he fought Hagler, he was retired all those years. Right. So what he did was he brought fighters in to fight in the gym with him. Right. And paid him a, a purse to fight Sugar Ray in the gym. So by the time right. he got to the Hagler. And they orchestrated yeah. those not like sparring sessions, exactly. but like actual fights with the Real bell fight. and a dude in there playing referee yeah. and the small gloves. Right. Nothing beats the reality. Right. We, You know, it's fiction and it's reality. So if you want to do something, do it to its realest as possible. Hey, you know what? It's it's not just good for the fighters. It's good for the sport. Yeah. Because I think about when you were an up-and-comer and when you were a newly crowned champion in the early 90s, it wasn't rare at all for the champions and the biggest stars of the sport, whether it was Julio Cesar Chavez or the aforementioned James yeah. Tony, or a few years later, guys like Oscar De La Hoya and Shane Mosley, it was not rare for them to fight five times a year yeah. or six times a year. Maybe they weren't all world title fights. Maybe some of them were non-title fights. You saw that a lot with Chavez when he would go back to Mexico yeah. or James Tony when he was like really heavy when he was out of the, yeah. the, the super middleweight or middleweight weight class. But those fights were still televised uh, and, and people still anticipated even those non-title bouts. And so it was just good for the very business of boxing. Yeah. You created more fans. You kept them satisfied. Stay uh, consistent. And people made money, too. You know. The more consistent <laughs> you are, the sharper you are. And right. like I said, you know, the butcher sharpens that knife once a week, sometimes twice a week. We cut through bone. But the thing is, you know, I found that I liked, train I liked fighting more than I liked training. Because right. I trained so hard that when I fought, let's get two or three fights out of this training. I could keep consistent, but just maintain it. So you didn't mind fighting a lower level dude? Didn't like mind. you're a twelve round fighter, but you didn't have a problem with fighting an eight rounder or something nope. against a dude you knew you would whoop his well, ass. Well yeah. when I was coming up in the early stages, the four yeah. rounds, the six rounds, the eight rounds. Yeah. Um, I would tell my manager, try to book me two or three times in a month. Okay. Right? And like I said, I fought twice in the same week one time. Yeah. Okay? So the more consistent I can get, I can build my record. And practice on my mistakes. Yeah. So if I watch a fight, I said, well, I should have did this. I should have did that. And that's how I perfected it. Right. That's why I get, I, guys wouldn't fight me eventually. I became 36-0. and 0, Yeah. Right? And then if I finally get a title shot. Yeah. Right? I'm thinking you were like, like maybe 38, 39 and 0 36 before you got. Yeah. yeah. You were 36-0 when yeah. you got your shot. Yeah. Wow. You go ahead and fight me. Because I was fighting so consistent, I looked sharp right. every fight. True. And I found that works better than me just training all the time and me questioning myself. Am I, do I, am I ready or right. am I not? And you wound up, I, I think, before you retired, 
you had more than 70 professional fights. 72 to be exact. Right. And your face ain't all cut up. God's and good. you're not slurring your words or anything. Like, like you know, a lot of guys had half that number of fights. But I wonder, the fact that you weren't just sparring crazy rounds or whatever. You must, you know, I mean, you, you must live clean or live pretty healthy. As right? you get older. Yeah. The greats have done it. There's, yeah. There's Abel Sanchez. Abel Sanchez Francis. is in the house. Yes, yes. As you get older, you spar less. That's what the great Phil Borgia taught me. Well, you should spar you less, spar less. Right? A lot of guys spar more. Yeah. Right? And that's how they get brain damage. Yeah. Because you get hit more in sparring because you're, you're a little bit careless. Right. So well, he, here's another thing, and I've witnessed this, and I'm not going to name names because you know, yeah. I don't want to be uncomfortable or anything like that. But they got so comfortable sparring, they forgot that you're taking blows to the head. Yeah. Like they're in sparring like they're just chilling, like sitting around an office. Yeah. You know, they're leaning against the ropes and blocking, and they got good at doing that, but they were also taking punches. But the then you start time. fighting that way too. Right. Sometimes it's called sparring, sparring yeah. partner mentality. You'll get in the ring, and you start feeling like you're sparring, and you're looking at a guy going, you know, wait. See, you got to starve the fighter when he gets older. Starve right. him. So he's maybe spar once or twice a week. Let's see. All right. Joe Martinez is climbing into the ring, our intrepid ring announcer, which means we must be close to bout number three tonight. As I mentioned, Christian Robles against Joel Bermudez. These and are super here we flyweights. Go, ladies and gentlemen, four rounds, super flyweight division, making his way first to the ring. Fighting out of the red corner from LA, here is Joel Bermudez. And his opponent finally out of the blue corner, ready to make his ring walk out of Bellflower, California, the unbeaten Christian Rollins. And here we go once again, ladies and gentlemen, four rounds of action this scheduled in the super flyweight division. Introducing to you first, fighting out of the red corner, wearing the colors and the flags of Mexico and the USA. He weighed in officially 110 and three quarter pounds. And tonight, in his third professional bout, he seeks victory number one, fighting out of Los Angeles, California. Here is Joel Bermuda. And across the ring stands his opponent fighting out of the blue corner. Wearing white trunks trimmed in gold and black. He weighed in 111 and one half pounds. He enters the ring tonight for the second time. Looking for victory number two from Bellflower, California. The undefeated Christian Robles. And your referee in charge of the action is Wayne Hedgeman. All right, you fighters receive your instructions in the dressing room. Obey my commands at all times, and above all, protect yourself at all times. We're good here, touch them up. Go back. Get it, get it, get it. 
Well, here's the tell of the tape. You look at him. 5'4", not much difference in the reach. 66, 65. Um, we'll see how well either man either capitalizes or utilizes. Yeah, they match up well physically speaking. We don't know how they match up in terms of skill. Well, you have one man at 0-2 and one man at 1-0. Um, but, I, you know, with club fights, four-round club fights, I've seen guys who are, are 0-3 beat the crap out of guys who are 3-4-0. and 4 and 0. Yeah, that can't happen. You it, never it, know. This is boxing. Like I said, you can play football, you can play basketball, you can't play boxing. <laughs> but Robles, we know, has got, at the very least, has some very good schooling having uh, Brian Valoria as his trainer. Yeah, but Valoria was a, a tremendous body function. And um, right now, Robles is setting his attack, and Bermudez is trying to get out of there. Very fast pace being set by Christian Robles. Yeah, that's what he's doing, trying to press the action and go to the body. Um, if he goes to the body, he has a good shot. But both men, like I said, they they seem equally matched right now, but Robles is taking advantage. It seems that uh, Joel, uh, I mean, uh, Robles is doing very well, but Joel is on the turn, trying to turn his back and, and retreat. So boxing is about how you handle yourself. And right now, the way Joel's carrying himself, he gets hit with a shot, and you can see he's pouring with the jab, and he's retreating. He's not attacking. I think Robles is being aggressive without getting wild. I like the high, the high volume attack. I like the combinations. I like the distance he has. It was a beautiful straight right to the body. I like how he follows up with his, his, his power punches. Just doesn't land single, single power shots. Yeah, it's still first round, so. You know, oh, there you go. He always landed a clean, clean right hand. Yeah, Bermudez has to do something to earn some respect pretty soon here. Oh, he is a sitting duck for the right hand. Yeah. Robles knows exactly how to land an overhand right. It was a nice jab to the chest from Robles a moment ago. Right to the body, another right to the body, left to the body. Covering up, staying in the pocket. And he's stunning Bermudez repeatedly here. Yeah, he's Bermudez, yeah, and, and Wayne Hedgepeth will stop a fight. We know that. He's just, Joel looks just too slow against Robles. He looks like he's fighting in slow motion. And um, Robles is doing what he wants and having his way. Well, it's like he was stymied by the fast tempo that was immediately set by Robles. Oh, he's, he's hurt. It, uh, this might be over. I think the bell's gonna save the day. There he goes. Yeah, but you know what? I think I think Ramunez's corner should should save him. Yeah, they should I think save maybe him. They should, yeah. He's overclassed, um, yeah. outboxed. Um, he doesn't look strong enough to fight off uh, Robles. Robles is gonna have his way in the second round with him again. Yeah, uh, you know, Bermudez just doesn't have an answer for anything Robles does. Just take a look, I mean, when, when Robles is throwing big overhand rights, and right there overhand right, I mean, it's tremendous the way he lands it. He, I mean, that shot is too flush. I think the corner should definitely stop this fight. Look at that man, it saved yeah. that man from himself. I would and not you say know what? And it was And it was launched with proper technique and proper timing from the right distance, set up with those two jabs to the chest. Yeah, right behind the jab, and that's what I said Back to boxing basics. Back to the jab, and then overhand right and back to the jab. I mean, right now I'm looking to see what Bermudez does to recover from that. All right, looks like we're gonna have a round two. We'll see how long Bermudez can last. He's gonna have to do something. And that's it. Wayne Hedgepeth, the referee, has seen enough. Bermudez is up and saying, why'd you stop it? Well, the answer is very simple, to save you from yourself. Yes, he was overmatched, uh, pretty much, you know. Good move by Robles to, to throw there right. Bermudez was just too slow and reacted. Yeah, and, and smart of Robles to rush out. 
not yeah. rush himself in terms yeah. of his, his, his punching, but to, to come out and check the chin as soon as possible. As you said, take a look at what you're just round. talking about. He comes out, right? And he's, he's throw, it's not much of a punch, but if you take a look, good look at it to see how much. Uh, There's a right landed there. You know, There's another right right on the nose, and it wasn't the full impact. But I think it's safe to say Joel Bermudez had not recovered from the shellacking he took in the opening round. Yes, he definitely got hurt. Say. There was no recovery in that in that minute time. Um, I don't know if they splash water on him, revive him, make, wake him up, put ice on his shorts. There's all kinds of things. I don't think that, anything was going to revive that him. That train is due to yeah. revive you. He was in over his head. Uh, and Robles looked very sharp, excellent technique, very entertaining style. Um, I think he's coming off more than a year's worth of inactivity. I didn't see any ring rust. So kudos to the young man. Kudos to his trainer and manager, Brian Valoria. I think Valoria has something here. This kid could develop into a legitimate prospect. I think so. I mean, he obviously hits very good for his weight class. Um, he executes and puts his, his punches together. He knows how to throw that right hand after the jab. Joe Martinez has the official announcement. Well, ladies and gentlemen, the end comes officially nine seconds. Round number two, your winner by KO he is still undefeated. Bellflower Zone, Christian Rowling. All right, Robles is taking his, oh, Cynthia, Cynthia Conte with Christian Robles. What a stoppage, what, wow. You said it to me earlier, you're gonna set up the jab with that overhand right. You predicted your fight, didn't know it was gonna be two uh, in two rounds. What'd you think of this fight? What'd you think of your opponent tonight? Uh, I, I, my bad. I think he was tough, you know, um, took a lot of punches the first round. I expected him to go down a lot sooner than I thought, but it, he, he was game. He was game. A little awkward, but he was game. A lot of moving down. We just saw someone come out of your corner. He's your coach, Brian Valori, the Hawaiian punch. He was your sparring. You were his sparring partner for all those years. How has that helped you in the ring, and how is that him being your coach and listening in your ear? It, it helps a lot knowing that no matter what he shows me, if I haven't seen it, he has. And I'm able to learn and just trust my corner. And as far as the sparring goes, I know no one's gonna hit me as hard as he did. So it's all good. <laughs> and tonight you showed me, you, I was even staying in the corner, I could hear the corner over there saying body body to you because you were head hunting, but you threw combos like crazy. You were five, six punch combos, uppercuts, hooks. <laughs> you throw everything. <laughs> he just like you taught him. Uh, do you have a message to all your fans, everyone that's tuned in, it's your first Hollywood Fight Nights. How do how do you feel? I, I feel amazing. I feel more than anything super grateful to everyone that supported me with throughout this past two years. It's been really tough. I've been training so hard just uh, knowing that this moment would come. So I'm extremely grateful and I'm hoping that uh, 360 loved it and I'm hoping to stay busy this year. So expect to see more knockouts. What do you want next? Some Krispy Kreme donuts. Chris <laughs> I can't eat that, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> oh wait, you know what, actually, can we do um, a replay since we, you're knocking, I mean, everyone's knocking on two, two rounds. Okay, let's do this. Is this the first or second round? Second round, okay, what happened here? Um, so I, I saw you turn southpaw, yeah. and the common thing was help us get outside the leg and leave with the right. So I was like, okay, I seen it, and I just went with it. I didn't know it was gonna completely land, but it, it, I, I thought it barely touched him. I didn't think that would be the one. But I tried to follow it up with, I think, a hook. Yeah, and I just missed. I was like, oh, man. I thought the hook would have put him down, but it was right. 
The funny thing is that both of you are uh, switch hitters. So when you told me you want to be like another Crawford, you want to switch hit, I was going to see if you were going to do that, and you noticed he did it. I got it. I saw it. I'm switch. I saw you. I just go like this. I'm more comfortable with the dogs. Congratulations to you guys. Christian Robles. Oh, and also, by the way, he needs a nickname. He needs a fight nickname, so start tweeting what you guys should think his fight nickname should be. Joshy. <laughs> Is Joshy? To your mom, Joshy. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you. There you guys go. Christian Robles. Undefeated. Okay. Have you guys filled out your Tecate uh, cards? Because we're going to do the raffle right now. Whoa. If you guys haven't given it in, too bad. That's your fault. Not my fault. You want to? We got three hats. What's your name? Amber. Hi, Amber. Hi. Hi. Say hi, Amber. Okay, the, <laughs> what is, uh, Al Lover, Al Lover, is, is it you? It is you, okay, come on up, you just got a hat. Ooh, some fancy colors here. Can you give him that edible? The next one. Diana Robertson. Diana Robertson. Come on up. You got a, a, a dope little half from 360. <laughs> Congratulations, Al Lover. And congratulations, Diana Robertson. Here you go. And I'm gonna. Uh, you want to take a picture? With, you gotta take a picture with the Gothic girls. I got one more hat, guys. Bye, All right. One last one, guys. Adriana Marquez. Adriana Marquez, are you here? Uh, yes, she is. Come on up. Congratulations. Make sure, oh, there you go, ladies. Thank you so much. Make sure you guys uh, go to the bar, support, support our bartenders. Drink some tecate, order some food, because fight night is still commences. Are you guys enjoying fight night, guys? Back to you guys. All right. Thank you, Cynthia. All right. So, final thoughts on Christian Robles? He's we on only his got way. to see one round of him, basically. He's on his way. Right. This kid is on his way. He's strong. He's hungry. He has a lot of desire. I like him. Yeah. I think he's on his way. Yeah. And that was your your buddy up there, uh, Al Lover, who uh, won some swag with the, with the Lover. raffle. Of all people wins. <laughs> he won. He won a hat. Is he related to Ed Lover? No, Yo he's MTV from Queens. Raps. I know, he's from Queens. <laughs> he was in the movie The Wire. Was he really? So, yeah, he showed him why. Oh. Why, like why that. does he wear the gloves? I have no idea. <laughs> Maybe, this is my, Maybe he has a touch of Michael Jackson. All right, all right. All right, so you got fans on Twitter. Brandon Stubbs says, jealous of Dougie Fisher right now. Gets to work with a legend, in my eye, in Kevin Kelly. Not to mention, Kevin is damn solid on the mic. 
Hollywood, Thank you. Hashtag Hollywood Fight Nights. Thank you. I, I, I try to be... You got fans on, in, in the social media world. Thank you. I appreciate all the love out there. You know, I try to give it to them like they should have it. And the sport has got to be taught, I think, personally. So, all right. thank you. You, you. you predate the social media era, but you stay relevant in the social media era. You got to love that. Another fan of yours, Nick Sanchez, says, Dougie Fisher, can you ask Kevin Kelly if Troy Dorsey was his toughest fight of his career? I still tell peeps if they want to see a war, to Google it. You don't have to Google it. You YouTube it. Yeah, YouTube so, it. Yeah. So, um, yes, it was. Really? It was the only fight, the first fight I ever peed blood, and I God. thought I was going to die. I really did. I, after the fight was over, because you know when your when your adrenaline's going, you're fighting, you're boxing, right? And you're not questioning how much. And I watched that fight myself. I got hit with a lot of punches. My earlobes were swollen. Um, really? My nose was bleeding. I couldn't hear. I couldn't breathe. And me and Dorsey were in the in hospital together. And we're friends to this day. He calls me. <laughs> really? He, he's very church like me. Yeah. And he sends me Bible verses all the time. We love each other. Okay. He's a great man. I mean, without Dorsey, I knew what I could take in boxing. That's why you see those fights after that with uh, Prince and Gaynor and all his other fights. Because that Dorsey fight, I thought once I could survive that, I could survive I anything. Survive anything. I remember watching that fight on TV. I'd never seen a fighter who was winning, who went on to win the fight, let out a primal scream in the middle of the fight. Troy Dorsey, who was a former kickboxing champ and he's a volume first, puncher. No, he's the first kickboxing champ and boxing champion in the world. And James Waring was the second. Yeah, James Waring at cruiserweight. Yes. And he also became a referee, am I right? Yes. A pretty good referee. Yes. Pretty good. But Troy Dorsey was a pressure fighter and a volume puncher, and he had you up against the ropes and you were fighting back just as fiercely, throwing back just as many punches. And I just, I never forget this. You're like, ah! <laughs> and you're yeah. letting the hands go. And I'm like, what the hell am I watching? Yeah. I'd never seen anything like that. I told my trainer, Phil Borge, at the time, I said, in the forefront, I said, Phil, how am I going to get rid of this guy? I mean, I'm like, what, 26 and 0, 27 and 0? Right. I said, how? I didn't get rid of this guy. Phil said, you're not. Welcome to boxing. Whoa. Yeah, Phil he said, he Kevin, told it like it was. Kevin, light up on your punching power. And throw lots of punches, and we're gonna win this fight by decision. Wow. And Nate Campbell, my friend Nate Campbell, called me when he fought the baby bull. And right. he said, Kevin, you experienced this before. Right. How do I beat the baby bull? <laughs> and I just told him the advice I did with Dorsey. He took it and he became champion. Wow. Wow. So Latin Box Sports says uh, Dougie Fisher and the Flushing Flash, a one two punch tonight, calling hashtag Hollywood Fight Nights. Thank you very much, Latin Box. Uh, and to Brandon, the conversation that we were having during that extended break, that's the kind of conversation we have off camera. Yeah. You know, just talking about fighter activity. I mean, if we got to kill more time, yeah. we could talk about uh, the, the 1988 uh, U.S. team and Olympic squad. The greatest squad ever. I kind Wait, of agree with you. I kind of, you know what? You got to agree. I got more champions yeah. in the 88 <laughs> squad than any squad in the history of boxing. This is what we talk about. When I see Kevin at the fights, this is what we talk about. Everybody talks yeah. about the 1976 U.S. Olympic squad, yes. the 1984 U.S. Olympic squad, obviously, and they're all-time great squads. A little bit underrated. 1988. A lot oh underrated. my God! Yeah, it's the greatest right. squad. Everybody produced from that squad: Riddick Bo, Roy Jones Jr., Michael Carball, right? Vince Phillips, Berno Phillips, right? Okay, Mark Two Sharp Johnson, right? I now, can and, keep and, 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 Vince, and Vince Phillips and yourself um, and and Verno, you didn't make the Olympic team, but you no. were on the U.S. team. Yeah. Now, now but you Me, got you, Tracy Patterson. You were close to making yes. the team. So I who, to the trials. So uh, who beat you? So Carl Daniels. Middleweight champion of the world. Oh wow, yeah. So from Missouri, how crazy Saint is that? Yeah. And uh, for the Latin, the Latin internet you got over here, I'm half Puerto Rican, so I'm half Puerto Rican. So guess what? My mama Puerto Rican, my father black. Best That's why I look world. like this. So you had to be a good boxer. Well, Come on now. I guess it was <laughs> destiny, right? Yeah, and you're from the New York area. So and a lot of about it. Dule. That's why. Right, right, uh, right. Boyle. Hey, also on that 1988 squad, Ray Mercer. Ray Mercer, Ray Bo. Yeah, Riddick, yeah. And they, right? and they were rivals, yeah, but okay. they never fought as pros. Look, yeah, we I have so many. What Eddie Cook? You forgot fast Eddie Cook. Yeah, World trained champion. by Ken Adams. Yeah, Sean won a Bay Mitchell. Title. Yeah, Sean Bay was amazing. I mean, we got guys that didn't last like one minute, two minutes. They lasted like years after that. Right, right. And you know, 
that was a time when the U.S. amateur boxing program must have been incredibly strong. And Maurice obviously Sanders. it would yeah. have been because it's coming off the 84 Olympics where we were so successful. Pat Nappy, right. that's why. Yeah, and I was the head coach. After correct? 88, we meddled a lot. In well, and Ken Adams was also yeah. coach. Ken yeah. Adams, and Roy Turner, Pro, of course, with Roy. Right. Uh, uh, coach Merck. Yeah, right. out in Merkinson. Um, it seemed to me that the amateur program after that changed. Yes. And after 88, that's well, why I we think in part because once. of because of the the controversy over Roy Jones Jr. not winning that gold medal. They were like they were saying, well, we got to do something about this scoring system, and they brought in the point system. And it turned out it could be just as corrupt. It's not about points. It's about the judges you, that you select. Yeah. And I think it kind of changed the style of amateur boxing a little bit. And then, of course, cable television exploding yeah. and then boxing moving off of uh, network prime time. The Olympic boxing yeah. moving off of prime time yeah. and on to, like, cable branches and stuff in the 90s. That definitely fractured it you know, a lot. That's the last time we really made medals. Or more than one. Right. And then we did, did we mention Kennedy McKinney? Kennedy McKinney, of course. Gold medal. Junior Jones. Not only oh Roy Jones, but Junior Jones. Jones. Oh, my God. Wow. Charles Murray, the, the natural. The natural. Everybody forgot about him. The natural. IBF junior welterweight champ. Phenomenal. See, puncher. I don't forget these guys. What a yeah. class. I, I'm just so honored to be one of the champions with Absolutely. that class. Um, 88 squad. Amazing squad. And Joel De La Hoya says, Dougie Fisher, my bro fought Dorsey in his eighth fight. That's very true. Oscar said he had a head as hard as a rock. He hurt his hand for the first time in his pro career against Troy Dorsey. Looking good, champ. Hashtag Kevin Kelly. Thank you for Thank the love. Thank you, Joel. Yeah, wow. Yeah, Joel is now a, a manager. Yeah, he did, didn't he? He's about 5'2", but his head makes him 5'7". <laughs> and he had two excellent fights with Jorge Paez. Yeah, amazing. Which I believe were on network television. Amazing fight. And I think they might have both been draws. Or maybe one, and they were controversial. Maybe one was a split decision the other was a draw you kids at home uh, go to box rec and check up on that and then go to youtube and watch these fights these are the fights that made me a hardcore boxing fanatic watching kevin kelly on you on the usa network and on network television and watching jorge paez go at it with troy dorsey on network tv this Amazing is like fight. summer of 1990 and they're going at it for 12 rounds this is what made me a fan Amazing. definitely amazing fights that Troy Dorsey fight, I still hear about it to this day. Do you really? Yeah, you know. I'm glad to hear that. I hear about three fights that your fans love. I'm glad I could give them to you. Got to be Nassim Ahmed. Me and Nassim right? Ahmed, me and Troy Dorsey, and me and Smoke Gainer. Oh, right. Um, the one where you came back, where your eyes were closed yeah, and you were I dropped. I learned one thing. Right. That was the first fight. Great fights, yes. Yeah. Great. There's no such thing as great fighters, but it's great fights. Right. Of course, what you remembered by that. People remember when you were in the ring, what you were doing that's, at that moment. That's true. And how that fight, where they was. So that's what remember. Like, who is anybody without your counterpart, your dance partner? Right. What is peanut butter without jelly? Yeah, I believe you What's went without cheese. You went unbeaten for your first 43 fights. 41, yeah. 41. So you were 41 and 0. People don't remember that. Yeah, they remember that you got up off the canvas multiple times to drop Nassim Hamed yeah. multiple times in an all-time great featherweight shootout in Madison Square Garden. Yeah, when I fought Ahmed, I was like, what, 44 and one or something like that. Yeah. Or 46 and one, somewhere around there. Like I said, I ran out of options because I would fight anybody. Yeah. As a boxer, I was a, I was a terrorist. I would fight anybody. Yeah. I didn't care who you was, what weight you was. Um, I wanted to fight the best and be the best. That's what, all I wanted. And I went to England, challenged Ahmed, because I saw him on TV. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so I had to get an opponent. Luda Bella right. told me, Kevin, you want to pay for a lot of money? Get an opponent. I said, who gonna fight me? So I went and got Hamed, and uh, it, was, it was a struggle. Right. You know, it was a struggle, but I got it done. But All he right. didn't want to rematch me. Dang, I couldn't get the rematch. Should have got the rematch. I, right. He didn't want to rematch. But you know what? That was a fight that, was, that made fans in New York, and beyond fans, it actually made people want to fight, like Pauli Malignaggi says, yeah. watching that fight made him want to be a boxer. Um, so speaking of New York City, Ryan Ceballo was New York City Golden Gloves champion, like yourself. Show everybody yeah. the, uh, the, the gloves. gloves. Yeah, you, when you win it, it was a U.S. national champion, a Golden Gloves national champion, ranked internationally, number four in the world. We've got an interview with Ryan Ceballo that we're going to show you. And um, if you guys don't know this kid yet, you're going to love what you see. You're going to love what you hear. 
everyone, I'm Cynthia Conti and I'm here with Randy Fuentes. You are the man that's going up against Brian Ceballo tomorrow night as the co-feature Hollywood Fight Nights. This is your first Hollywood Fight Night that you're going to be on. Uh, how do you feel? Talk about how you feel about being the co-feature. Uh, I feel great. Uh, I feel I've earned up to this uh, kind of capacity of fighter. Uh, we've been training real hard. We haven't stopped non-stop training. My coach, my trainers, and uh, we're ready to go. You ready to go, Hitman? No, you had an undefeated. You have an undefeated prospect, and he was the one that debuted on our show. What are you going to show that's different? You're going to show your fans, and you're going to show Brian Ceballos' fan why you deserve to win tomorrow. Uh, we're just going to come in, uh, do a lot of work, do what we got to do, take care of business, and that's it. You're going to put up a tough fight for him because you are his first southpaw. Oh, yeah, I didn't know that, huh? Well, you have a message for Brian tomorrow before you guys step in the ring. Uh, just bring it, bro, because I'm coming for you. There you go. Brian, you hear that? He's bringing it, so you better bring it. Like I said, bring me some blood. I love a big fight. I love a good fight. <laughs> All right, well, good luck to you. All right, bye, guys. Hey, everyone, I'm Cynthia Conti, and look at who we got here. Well, you know, if you don't know him, he's the undefeated prospect. Brian Ceballo, welcome back to Hollywood Fight Nights. How, this is your fourth time. What does that feel like for you to come back? You made your pro debut on the first Hollywood Fight Night. You're back. How do you feel? Uh, I feel I feel home. You know, I feel like I'm home. Uh, there's no there's no better place to be uh, than to be here again, especially starting the new year. So I'm excited. You just fought over at Madison Square Garden at the Hulu Theater. Congratulations, another win. Fought in your hometown. That was your actual home, but. I think it's a little better here because it's a lot sunnier. How was that? How was how was it fighting at MSG for the first or at Hulu Theater as a, a as a pro? Yeah, uh, it was my first time as a pro. I fought there before uh, when I was an amateur, but it's I mean it's an arena that that's pretty much inexplainable, you know, for for itself. It has so much history, and I felt great fighting there. That the entire arena was packed, and so I just went in there and did my thing. Right, well, you're fighting a tough opponent, Randy Fuentes. What are you going to show us that you haven't shown us already? I mean, you've, you've made people quit. You've had some knockouts. What are you going to do to Randy this time, tomorrow night? Well, you know, he's a softball. It's my mm -hmm. first softball as a pro career. Um, but we're just going to go in there and execute the game plan that my coach and I has planned. So, When you train, even though you know they're not a southpaw, do you ever train for southpaws regardless? Yeah, we always we always train for, for every scenario, yeah. Okay. You know, opponents drop out. Uh, we there's some last minute replacement, so we always have to make sure we're ready for anything. Well, do you have a message for Randy since you are the co-feature tomorrow night at Hollywood Fight Nights at Avalon Theater in Hollywood, California? I mean, Randy, just go in there and do your thing. Uh, we're gonna go in there and do our thing, so let's go. I wanna see a knockout, I wanna, you know what? I love blood, you know me. I wanna, I wanna knock out him, someone has to quit. <laughs> well, good luck to you. Thank you, you'll be All surprised. Right. Oh, good. All right. Thank you. <laughs> All right. That was Cynthia Conte interviewing Brian Ceballo and Randy Fuentes yesterday after the weigh-in at the Churchill Boxing Club in Santa Monica. You heard what they had to say. Now let's see what they do in the ring. We're ready for bout number four, and the fighters will be walking into the ring as soon as Joe Martinez, <laughs> who's getting his dance on across the ring right now, <laughs> talking to cut man, candy man. <laughs> But our intrepid announcer, Joe Martinez, about ready to enter the ring to introduce these welterweights. Brian Ceballo, 6-0. Randy Fuentes, 8-7-1, coming off an upset victory. And here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Action resumes from Hollywood Fight Nights here at the Avalon Theater. Six rounds, welterweights, making his way to the ring, fighting out of the red corner. From McAllen, Texas, here is Randy Fuentes.
And now ready to make his ring walk, finally out of the blue corner. Undefeated welterweight from New York, here is Brian Savio! And now, fine fans, we are set to go with our co-feature bout of the evening. Six rounds this scheduled in the welterweight division. Introducing to you first, fighting out of the red corner. Wearing black trimmed in tiger stripe gold, he weighed in 147 pounds. As a professional in 16 bouts, his record, eight victories, seven defeats, one draw with two wins coming by way of knockout. Hailing from McAllen, Texas, here is the hitman, Randy Fuentes. And across the ring, his opponent, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing black trunks trimmed in red and silver. He weighed in 146 and one half pounds. In six professional bouts, he stands perfect with six victories, no defeats, three wins coming by way of knockout, hailing from the brooks of Brooklyn, New York. Here's the undefeated welterweight, Brian Silvio! And your referee in charge of the action is Thomas Taylor. All right, gentlemen, belt line's good here, belt line's good here. We've got a lefty against a righty, so I'm gonna caution you now. Watch the heads, watch the feet, all right? Listen to my instructions, protect yourselves at all times. Touch gloves, back to your corner, gentlemen. Here we look at take a little tiller tape. As you know, Brian Sabello's very, very tall. Five inches. I mean, look at that reach of it. It's 77.5 to 67. Uh, I would say that right now, Randy Fuentes has got to get on the inside. Um, he's at long range. Look how big Brian Sabello looks. He looks like a wealth. He looks like a Tommy Hearns. Yeah, or oh, he looks like a junior middleweight. Yeah, look how big he is. He's filling out. He was not this muscular last year. I can see and him he, going he, to middle he's, he's just started. He's just started uh, working with the strength and conditioning coach, and, and it's. We'll see if it pays dividends in terms of his boxing, but definitely his physique is is um, matured into a modern sized welterweight. Yeah, he's he's pretty big for his size. Um, like I said, right now he's, he's like five ten is a very good size for welterweight. Absolutely. Especially well, when you got... Uh, that was the height of Sugar Ray Leonard. Yeah, think about it. You got yeah, yeah. Crawford, like 5'7", five, 5'8". Five, yep. Manny McCall's 5'7". They're my height, right? They're welterweight. He's more built like Errol Spence. Right. Yeah, he's going to bully a lot of welterweights around, I tell you. And he's a thinking boxer in there. Very good foundation. He's very poised, and that speaks to that extensive amateur background. And he had, in fact, he had even before turning pro, he had amateur slash semi-pro fights in the World Series of Boxing. He had six or seven of those, and he earned a number four world amateur ranking during that series. And prior to that, he compiled almost 220 amateur bouts, won 206 of them. Oh, very good fighter. Like I said. He knows what he's doing. Right now, he's doing the fill-out process. Um, right now, he's utilizing the jab. Like I said, this this is the old instruction. His trainer in the corner, I know him from New York City. 
very, very well. I can't remember of his name right now, man, but I do know his trainer, and he's a very credible trainer. Um, these days, it's teachers, trainers, and motivators. Um, you got to pick which way your trainer is going to be. Is he going to be a motivator, a teacher? See, a teacher tells you how to throw things and why you throw them. A trainer tells you just throw the punches. <laughs> a motivator is how to motivate you. It looks to me like Sabayo has a good teacher because yeah, very he, good teacher. every punch has a reason. There's um, beautiful symmetry between what his hands are doing and his footwork. He kind of glides in and out. He stays just out of range. He's able to land his punches. Fuentes is not able to land his punches. That's the science of boxing, in effect. Beautiful jab. He hooks off the jab right to the stomach. Fuentes felt that because he's backing off, and Fuentes is a stout, thick dude, a lot in the way of physical strength. He enters this fight, 16 pro bouts, and he's coming in off an upset win. A guy that Fuentes beat in his last fight had a record of 17-1-1, one one. so you have to imagine the Texan is entering this fight with some confidence. And I got to say, Ceballo was beautiful in that opening round. I mean, he Amazing. was gliding like butter. The punches were, were not just fast. They were fluid and with purpose. Didn't overcommit to anything. And very accurate. See, the thing with him, he doesn't smother himself. He knows exactly where he's at at all times. He's in position. He throws a right hand, a right hand sometimes. Sometimes he fakes it. So he's doing a lot of things that a seasoned professional does. He comes from New York City where... In the Gleason's gym, you have terrible pros. I mean, you got Juan Laporte down there training fighters. Oh. Um, you used to have a Mill Griff when his boy passed away. Right. So you had a great deal of knowledge in that gym. Balos knows how to slip and glide. Um, it's, it's really, really good with his footwork. It's all footwork. If you look at his feet, he's doing amazing things with his feet. It's all in the feet footwork. And he knows what to do when a strong guy like Fuentes gets inside. He ties him up. Yeah, he knows exactly how to tie him up. Like I said, you know. This um, is what you call ring generalship, yeah. when you're, you're, you're controlling the tempo of the bout, even when you're not throwing punches. Yeah, this is education in the gym. Um, Fuentes has got to make... Brian do something that Brian doesn't want to do to be competitive in this fight. Um, if, if being a shoe on the other foot now, uh, Randy Fuentes, if I was advising him, I would say parry the jab. When he throws his jab, it's about to throw his jab, parry it, and slide in off your head. There goes it. Do that move right there, but he's got to come back to the jab. Very good move, but if he's sitting waiting like a duck in water. They're trading accurate yeah. punches, power punches, to the stomach. When yeah. this landed the left, Sabalos came back with the right. Well, Fentes needs to parry the jab, which means knock it down, okay? Knock his jab down, slap his jab, and slide in behind it and throw a right hand and then throw a hook. Instead, he's watching rather than doing. He is finding a home for that left of the body, though. But everything, every, all the offense... From Ceballo comes from the jab. He works everything off the jab. Yeah. Just so if you, if you disrupt punch. that jab. He just got hit by a big punch just now, though. Ceballo, he, got, he landed, got hit right in the face with a nice hook. Well, here's the thing. Fuentes uh, basically has a 500 record. He's 8-7-1. and one. But in those 16 bouts, he's been in with solid opposition. He's been in with better fighters than Ceballos has been in with. So he has that experience. He's not going to be easy. He's going to land a few shots. Yeah, he's durable. You can see that Fuentes knows how to survive. Uh, Ceballo is, is right now learning that, you know, it, he's got to go downstairs like he just did and upstairs, downstairs and upstairs. Um, Fuentes right now, like I said, he's, he's throwing, they call him a journeyman. Oh, he, Fuentes landed a left to the head, and he's not able to capitalize on that because he rushes in and, and Ceballo wisely ties him up. We're going to see how Ceballo does as this fight goes on. Um, you know, it's education. That's what this fight is, about education. 
And I think part of the reason the matchmakers chose Randy Fuentes is because he's durable. He's known for going the distance. And they want Brian to learn by fighting a solid six rounds. It's a good brisk pace so far. What would, you, what, what would you be telling Ceballo between rounds? Ceballo right now is struggling with a southpaw. I'm watching him fight the southpaw, so I'm saying to myself, how would I take advantage of it? Um, when you fight a lefty, he, Ceballo seems to be fighting him like he's righty. He, you know, you got to do little extra things. Ceballo's going to take his left foot, put it on the outside of the right foot of Fuentes, and then he can throw a straight right hand. Uh. So he's not doing that, okay? Also, he's throwing a jab, okay, instead of a straight right hand. He's setting a jab right hand up, but he's not going to land it with a blinding jab. He's got to step behind his jab. Ceballo right now looks to me more tentative than aggressive, you know, and I think that's due to Fuentes, I, and I, I, give him, I give him a lot of credit. Round three in a scheduled six-round welterweight bout. Fuentes is known for being durable. He's here to provide professional resistance, and maybe Ceballos realizes that. Like right he decided, there. okay, maybe I'm not going to bite down too much on these punches because... It's a waste of time trying to knock this guy out. I'm just going to try to outbox him. If you look at the footwork, every time yeah. Ceballos gets in range to throw the right hand, he doesn't throw it. He throws a jab instead. When the foot, you look at Ceballos' left foot is on the outside of the, of the foot that the southpaw is on, Fuentes, he doesn't throw the right hand. He throws the jab. So he's picking the wrong punches to throw when his feet is in position. That's what's going on here. It's, a, it's, a, it's actually boxing at this level is a game. It's totally psychological. Like right there is right hand. Right there, there is. He threw it, but he missed it. He's got to throw it straight. And he has to worry about what Fuentes fires back at him, because Fuentes has heavy hands. And oh, that was a beautiful right hook from Fuentes. And on top of it, Ceballos got his chin in the air. He's not being defensive when he's being offensive. That's why he's getting countered. He'll watch this tape and be mad at himself for some of the things that he's done. That's part of the learning process. Though. Yes, definitely. Going to the next level. This is very good matchmaking here, I, I'd say, style-wise. Yeah, promoter Tom Loeffler, the, the president of 360 Promotions, um, categorized this as a, a step-up fight, as did the, the management of Sabaya. You know, like I said, they, they don't want they want him to ring with slip. somebody. Yeah. That's a slip. Put him in the ring with somebody. That hurt, let's hope he didn't hurt his uh, ankle. With some rounds. You know, he don't look lipping or anything like that. Put him in the ring with somebody he can do some rounds with that's durable. He's not going to hit and just lay down. You need fights like this in your career. You know, uh, Fuentes is uh, durable. Well, you know, Fuentes is not just durable. He's physically strong. Fuentes is a guy, despite his, his short and stocky stature, he's able to carry heavier weight than welterweight. He's fought as heavy as 170. Um, and obviously he didn't look like an Adonis fighting, you know, around uh, the super middleweight level or, or around the super middleweight limit, but he actually carried it. Like he wasn't like flabby fat. He's, he's one of those guys. So he's physically strong and I'm sure his, his hands are quite heavy. I believe that when I'm watching this fight now, that Ceballos struggling a little with the southpawness, the awkwardness of um, Fuentes. I that, think that's, that's a little bit of a surprise to me because I, of his amateur background. You got to figure he faced a lot of southpaws as an amateur. Yeah, but he's not having his way this, this fight. The, a, a big left landed by Fuentes. It was partially blocked by Ceballos. Kevin, who did you score round three for? Round three, I gave it dead even. Um, I, I, I believe that Fuentes did enough to keep him in the fight that round. Uh, there was a lot of missing by Sabella. I mean, I think I think right now, Fuentes is coming to his own. Um, I got 30, 28 unofficially, of course. Um, 
I gave the last three rounds to Brian, but a 10-10 in the third round makes it kind of close. I gave the, the third round to Fuentes. Oh, good. I got good. first two rounds for Ceballos, third round three to yeah. Fuentes. It so. could be that. Like I said, it, it definitely could be that. I, I, I'm, I can't discriminate with that one. Round four of this welterweight six-rounder. Ceballos kind of pawing with the jab, not putting it out there as confidently as he did in the opening round. Yeah, he's not throwing the jab. He's it's called pawing. He's not supposed to be pawing the jab like that because an opponent's not going to really respect you or respect the jab. Ceballos should be throwing the jab at him rather than pawing it out there, trying to set the right hand up. Have opponents of yours told you that it's, it's more difficult to jab against a southpaw than yeah. it is against an orthodox fighter? With me, with me, I didn't play that patty, that pity pack game. That's from the amateurs. I didn't play that game with the slapping, slapping, slapping. I, I am pretty much through the jab. Okay, I threw the jab at you. Um, the thing that Sabalo, he has the reach advantage, but he's not throwing the jab. He's pouring. So Sabalo needs to throw straight, right, right hands. And like I said, he, this is a lesson from. I think there's some things that he's not doing here. Uh, but Fuentes is making. I ain't gonna lie. Fuentes is making this fight interesting. He's making it physical, which is what he needs to do. And he's uh, forcing Ceballos to sit down a little bit more in his punches just to get that respect. That was a nice lead right hand from Ceballos. But Fuentes has landed some solid shots of his own. Ceballos just turned southpaw in a clinch. Um, there's some things that Ceballos is practicing or trying out to see how it works. Looks like he's adding a little bit of an arc to his right hand now. Sort of a, a right cross, not a straight right. Landing on that sort of cauliflowered ear of Fuentes. Well, one thing I can tell Ceballos is not utilizing his reach advantage as a benefit. And he's allowing Fuentes on the inside, and that's where Fuentes is dangerous. On the inside. You never know what you're going to get. You know, boxing's like a couple of nuts. You let opponent have an advantage sometimes. And it, you, you get defeated because of it. I tell you what, Fuentes is not intimidated at all. Good matchup. This is a very good matchup, Styles. He is boxing and, and fighting intermittently with a lot of confidence. Yes, Ceballos is still boxing with confidence as well, but you feel like it's being tested a little bit. Oh, he's being tested today because Fuentes is going forward now. Um, He's going to the body. He thought those punches were going to work for him later on in the fight. You see they're talking to each other. Yeah, so this is it's interesting. It's very competitive. And, it's, and you can tell, I can't tell what they're saying, but it's, it's bravado from both sides. It's a good one-two combination landed by Sabaya right before the bell. And Kevin, that round four was a close round. I scored it for Ceballos just based on those one-two combinations that he landed right before the bell. Yeah, right in the end, I gave him to me. I mean, this is a very interesting fight. Um, the lefty-righty combination is making it a little bit difficult for Ceballos. And right now, like I said, if you look at it, I got it 48-37. Unofficially, of course, very approachable for Fuentes to get back into this fight. Well, I agree. And, you know, just because I scored the round, uh, round four for Ceballos doesn't mean one of the official judges didn't score it for Fuentes because Fuentes certainly had his moments in that round, particularly in the first half of it. Yeah, we don't know. Like I said, when you're watching a fight, you're getting different perspectives because you got judges sitting at different angles. So, you know, the choice is yours. Sometimes it's dead even. And, and sometimes, who do you give it around to? Yeah. Right. And, and as we enter round five, uh, you know, we should definitely mention our, our scorecards are highly unofficial. Yeah, highly. We're not just scoring here. We've got a, you know, a monitor. We've got headsets on. We've got distractions and so forth. So we we got a monitor, so we're getting two views of the fight. That's true. Live and television. Of course, and, let me tell you. And, and the, the judges don't get that perspective, though. So we can't expect them to see the fight exactly as we see it. I was thinking maybe they should start doing that to judges. What do you think? I'm all for it. Because sometimes I've scored fights. My eyes see one thing and my monitor sees something else. Right. I went to a boxing match and a, a fight broke out. 
That's what's you going know what? on right we, now. We've had some good exchanges in round four, and the, the, the boxers are continuing the exchanges here in round five. Now, this fight broke out because it seems to me that Sabayo wants to initiate the action now. He wants to come forward. Their roles have changed a little bit since the first two rounds. It, it's it's Sabayos who seems to be stalking Fuentes, and Fuentes seems to be boxing a little bit more and, and, and picking his shots. Yeah, so Bayo has to be very careful because Fuentes, Fuentes, Fuentes is finding a nice spot for the left hand. And Fuentes has been active. So he's he's got his rhythm. He's not rusty at all. So his timing is there. As I said, his confidence is there. And obviously, Ceballos has been kept very active. He turned pro last March and fought six times last year. Which, by modern standards, is very active, even for a prospect. Yeah, that's crazy. I, I, I should have doubled that number. <laughs> I know. <laughs> well, it was when you were a prospect, yeah, they'd be fighting every month. I, I want it twice. If I get twice a month, I'll like that. Yeah, so Bios land right in front of Fuentes, but Fuentes is not letting his hands go at all. And I tell you, you know. Oh, what a. Oh! Big left hand. Brian Sabaya for the first time in his career. Fuentes found him. He hit him with a left hand first, and then he found him again the second time. We're going to see how Sabaya survives, but he's got 52 seconds to survive to get out of this round. Fuentes is coming at him with bad intentions. Sabaya wisely held him. Yeah, he winning was close. He was winning that round until he got caught. Well, maybe being a come forward aggressor is not the right boxing identity for Ceballo. Well, maybe he needs to be a slick cutie in there. Yeah, like right now he's trying to box and move and, and do different things. Um, like right now, that punch was amazing that he caught him with the old man. It was huge. Put Ceballos flat on his back, and you gotta wonder if the cobwebs are still there. I don't Ceballos think Ceballos is trying to get his legs under him. He wisely, holding Fuentes on the inside, helped run out that clock. He's, 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 he's got some good instincts in there. But he definitely lost that round 10-8. Oh, definitely. Let me take a look. Look at him, the action in the middle right now. I mean, Ceballos, there go there. Oh, straight left hand. He touched him with the first one. He touched him a little bit. You'll see right here. He throws one, and then throws one. He catches him, the second one. It's almost like the first left set That's up that, the did. second punch. That's what I saw. The first left hand landed. He just repeated the same move and caught him again. Of course, Ceballos was taking it for granted as he got hit. So when you get hit, the first thing you got to think to yourself, is why did I get hit? And of course, the second time the guy does it, remember, he finds you, it's called finding you. Once I find you, I know where you're at, and I can knock you out. Savile has something to fight for. I scored one round for Fuentes, round four was close. Round five definitely went to Fuentes 10-8. So this fight could hang in the balance here in round six. So Sabayos really has something to fight for here. He's fighting to keep his record undefeated. I got it scored 48-47, because that was a two-point round, and he was winning by three points. So now he's only winning by one point. So now Sabayo has to really do something special to make sure the judges' scorecards read in his favor. Now, he's been out working Fuentes all fight. I think he needs to continue to do that. He needs to continue to get respect, and he's got to watch that left hand. It's all in the footwork, like I said earlier in the fight. Fuentes is getting that right foot on the outside and throwing a straight left hand. And you'll see it right here. He's doing it. And see, look at this. They're all in the footwork. Every time Ceballo steps to his right, he sends he runs right to the left hand. Every time. Randy. 
Ceballo is keeping Fuentes at bay with some nice straight rights. Still not snapping his jab out, but now the right hand is backing Fuentes up. Ceballo still needs to be careful. Ceballo's not accurate. That's what he's doing. He's, he's not too accurate with his punches. Um, I'm starting to notice that Ceballo, the knockdown, you know, he might have recovered from it, but his accuracy is way off. That was a nice old check hook that uh, Ceballos had Fuentes run into. He's got to remember this. When he watched this footage, he's going to have to watch the footwork where he was at. He was always out of position. I'm a southpaw. Right? I'm going to stick my foot outside your right foot and throw my left hand. Oh, your left foot. Sorry, left foot. You know, one thing that I haven't mentioned through the duration of this fight is that Fuentes has got some nice upper body movement. He's kind of caging in there. He's not just a stationary target. He has his hands up. He tries to parry punches. You got to remember, losses are experience too. Absolutely. So when you lose, you still learn from it. Yeah, and Fuentes, but he's, you know, he dips and he ducks and he moves his, his upper body around, so he, he's not easy to hit. Yeah, the big thing that I see Sabayo needs work with is throwing his combination punch and bringing that chin down. That's why the chin got hit. He got it way up in the air. See his chin, how far up in the air it is? I see it. So yeah. in the first round, I was saying he's, he's been taught well, but there's still learning to be done, obviously. As he gets tired. You know what, he, Kevin, we wouldn't have saw that if he wasn't in with a tough ombre. Exactly. Like Randy Fuentes. So he kudos to the matchmakers, the promoters, the management. So Bios, if he gets this W, he, he had to earn it. Oh, this he earned. Well, ladies and gentlemen, after six rounds of boxing, we go to the judges' scorecards, and here are the totals. Raul Caiz Jr. has it, 58-55. Fernando Villarreal and Eddie Hernandez both have it, 57-56. All for your winner by unanimous decision. And still undefeated from Brooklyn, New York, Brian Ceballos! Like I said, 
Ceballo had to earn that victory. Definitely. I, I had the same scorecard as two of the judges, 57-56. I had it a one-point fight. What that means is I scored it four rounds to two. Uh, with the 10-8 round, I take a point away from Ceballo, going from 58 to 56 to 57-56. A draw would have been fair, as a matter of fact, in this fight. And I'm it sure Ceballo was, was sweating it out a little bit. He, this is the first time he fights somebody that he hits and they don't go down. And it dropped them too at the same time. Congratulations, Brian. You are still undefeated. Brooklyn in the house, guys. Give him up. Give it up. This is the first time you got dropped as a pro, huh? In my entire career. How did you feel when that happened? I was, I was even blown away. Um, I mean, it's, a, it's like one shot. Honestly, you know, it just feels like, like another shot. I mean, it, it just happened so quick that uh, you really don't realize it. You know, I, I got dropped, I got back up, got my head back straight and back in the game. He was a southpaw and when I talked to him, he is a very unconventional southpaw and that was your very first southpaw as a pro. You've been fighting him. What did you learn about yourself with this fight? Uh, I learned I learned a lot, you know, I, uh, that's why my team, they selected the softball because, you know, we're going to have to fight softballs in the future. You know, there are a lot of uh, up and coming guys that are softball. There are a lot of really good guys at the top right now that are softballs. So we're going to have to face them sooner or later um, as we keep climbing up the ranks. And this was the perfect opportunity to, to pick someone that's, you know, he, he's been in the ring. He has some experience and uh, we're, we're taking this experience on to the future, you know, when, when we fight those top quality guys. You know, this was the fight that we were watching you, and as a pro, you, you, went, you went the distance, you worked the jab, you, you, you kept him at bay, you worked the body, both of you guys were throwing blows. I mean, sweat was all over the damn place. How do you feel, I mean, just overall, how do you rate your performance tonight? One through 10. Uh, one through ten, I rate my performance about a seven, I would say, today. Um, I could have done a lot better um, if I would have followed the game plan that my coach and I had from the very start. Uh, we could have had a, a ten, you know. Um, but things happen. This is boxing. Um, I'm grateful for everyone that came out to support. Um, everyone that has been watching all around, all around the globe. Um, I appreciate them, and I appreciate every, everyone close to me, you know, that, that's helped me get through this. And um, for your opponent, Randy Fuentes, Hitman, his name is Hitman because he just wanted to come and kill, and that is hence why his name is. And he was looking for you. He was coming out for you, and I told you that. How did you rate him tonight in the ring? He came to fight. Um, you know, I, I give all the props in the world to him and his team. And, um, you know, that's why, that's why my team chose him. We knew that he was going to come to fight. He, he's, a tough, he's a tough guy. Um, and he has experience. He's been in there with, with a lot of good guys. He beat a 17 and one guy in his last fight. So we knew he was coming to fight. Um, we, don't want, we don't want to take anyone that we're just gonna stop in, in a round or two, you know? We want that experience so that when we get up there, it's not new. So that's why my team chose him. And he came to fight like, like we saw today. So all props to him and his team. Did you notice about it? And a couple of people when I were watching, you had your, your chin up, held high a little. Did you notice that? Um, I did not, um, but my coach is working hard on that to fix that. Um, you know, my coach and I, we've just been working for about, well, maybe like six to eight months. So it's, it's pretty brand new, um, but I'm, I'm so excited to, to, you know, become world champion and, and stay up there for, for a really long time with this guy. And everyone in my team, Tom Loeffler, um, Tim Van Newhouse, um, Dave McWaters, everyone in my team, you know, I, I'm so grateful for them. Well, you should be because you made your pro debut right here and this on this very stage and in this very ve in this venue you just won again you kept your undefeated record your manager tim van newhouse talk about how how did he do tonight i think um this is great for a prospect uh, it's the most important thing for them to always learn and develop in each fight i think that they're going to take this as a big learning experience and colin's going to take him home and put his boot in his ass and make the adjustments that he needs to make to continue forward. But we're really proud of Brian. This kid, we knew going into this that he was going to be a very tough competitor, but he was going to put new tools in Brian's tool bag to develop and 
and continue to grow in the sport. And this is what a young fighter needs. And how did he do when you saw him? Well, um, he, like you said, he had his chin a little too high. He got dropped, but it's not when you get dropped, it's how you got up. And um, he got up and he finished the fight. Uh, and so we just go, go back to the drawing board and try to clean up some of the mistakes. He had that fighting spirit, that fighting pride in you. You got back up, you fought, and you fought to that victory. Congratulations, Brian. You got a message to all your fans. New York is watching you right now. <laughs> no, thank you. Thank you, everyone that came out to support. Thank you, um, everyone who's in here right now, um, supporting Tom Lawler 360 as he continues to rise. Um, and, you know, thank you for following my journey as well. And to everyone watching all around the world, I appreciate you. Keep watching, and, you know, we're, it's, it's up from here. It's, on, it's only up from here. Thank you, guys. You guys give it up for Brian Ceballo. Oops. All right, so we have, let's see, who are we bringing in here now? We're gonna bring in Mr. Tom Loeffler. Come on up, the man with a plan here. The president of 360 Promotions and the one that put on this party for us, Efrita Cate, yes. All right, Tom, fifth installment. We're almost done, we got the main event next. How, fight night's been quick. We didn't expect it to be, and this was the first fight tonight that went the distance. How's fight night going so far? First of all, we want to welcome everyone. Thank you for coming out to the Avalon Hollywood. We appreciate all the support. This was a great fight. This was a great learning experience for Brian Ceballo. We had a tremendous, uh, George Navarro had a great fight. I mean, so many, uh, Kristen Robles, so many uh, of the undercard fighters. We have some celebrities in the house that we want to thank. It's uh, coming out. Mark Rhino Smith is here. Eric Roberts is here. Yvonne Braithwaite Burke is here. Dr. Burke is here. So we really appreciate everyone coming out. We have uh, one of the best trainers in the world, Dr. Abel Sanchez, is here. We want to bring in uh, Abel Sanchez. Abel can say a few words. It's a great, it's a great atmosphere, and, and these shows are growing, and you're, you're seeing great fights here. We got the main event still coming up with Myra Sella and Aaron Tohill. Welcome, Abel. I see you. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. You're here for Sunday Fun Day for Hollywood Fight Nights, but you're in a different position. You're usually in one of the corners, but you're sitting back there like a little paparazzi boy. In the corner. You are in the corner, but how does it feel to be sitting there as a spectator as opposed to working with a fighter? Actually, what an appreciation for some of the shots that these guys get. Uh, it's so nerve-wracking sitting there trying to take pictures and trying to anticipate, but uh, I'm happy to be here supporting the uh, Hollywood Fight Night, and uh, even though it's on a Sunday, it's kind of difficult to drive down from the mountain, but I'm here to support Tom. How's the fights been for, for you? Have, have they been fun? Have, they been, have you seen some talent in the ring? Actually, we've seen very good fights. Uh, the first four fights, um, I'm expecting the same from the main event. There's a couple kids in the first couple fights that uh, are going to be very special in the future. I see you ducking over there, you know, slipping, slipping. I see that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm fighting like, in, like I do in the corner. It's kind of difficult to be sitting there without a fighter in the ring. Okay, and what do you expect? Do you know anything about uh, Maricela? and um, Aaron, do you know anything about this main event coming up? I've seen Maricela fight before. Uh, she's a tough girl. Uh, I believe she's dropping in, down in weight, uh, one division. So it should be uh, maybe her division uh, to rule for a while if she can, uh, she can get over this girl. I believe this girl's a real tough girl. She's uh, an MMA artist. Uh, so uh, I don't really know that much about her, but I know about Maricela. She's an MMA artist. She's a boxing coach. So. Yeah, you, just because she hasn't been in the ring doesn't mean she hasn't been working on her skills, guys. All right? So this is going to be a good fight. Good fight. So do you have a message for your fans? You've got fans, Abel. You know that, right? Well, just uh, to keep uh, watching our fighters from the summit, we have uh, uh, Guido Vianello fighting on the 10th on the Ramirez card in Fresno. Uh, February 23rd, we have uh, Joe Joyce fighting Werner Vince Tavern, the next world champion in his eighth fight, uh, Joe Joyce. So it's a difficult step up, but uh, hopefully they support us and hopefully he does well and we'll go on to make another champion. Well, you are, I always say the heavyweights are back, so you know, good luck to Joe and all your upcoming fights. What else do you want? I don't know. Mark, oh, oh, I, I didn't know. And the next show in March.
We're going to make an announcement pretty soon, but Surrey Boachuk, who also able trains 12 and 0 with 12 knockouts, he'll be coming back here fighting in the main event in the March show. So we got an exciting uh, shows coming up. We want to welcome Kevin Kelly, former WBC featherweight champion. He's on the broadcast now with Doug Fisher. Michael Hunter is here with us. Mike Perez is here in the house. Daisy Lang is here to support the female uh, boxers. So we want to just appreciate everyone, uh, everyone coming out. And we also want to thank our sponsors, uh, Tecate, the official beer of boxing, and MGM Resort. So make sure you guys drink up, drink Tecate. I would say Browns are all on Tom, but <laughs> maybe a shot. Maybe a shot of Chivas. Yeah? Just say it's on Tom's tab. That's all. All right, guys. It's fight night, guys. Come on. It's Sunday fun day. Have some fun. Get drunk. Call in sick tomorrow because we got the main event coming up. We got La Diva going up against Aaron Towhill, guys. This is going to be a banger. It's a banger, guys. Even though it's a girl fight, these girls are going to get down and dirty. I think we're getting ready to go on. All right, Kevin. So, last thoughts on Brian Ceballo and uh, his bold stand against Randy Fuentes. He improves to seven and zero. Oh. Good effort. Um, he needs you need fights like that, especially young fighters. They need fights that they can learn from, they right. can grow from. Not guys they hit, they go down. There's a false illusion in their head, then they think everybody is going to they're going to hit them. They're going to lay down. Yeah, and to Brian uh, and his co-manager, Timmy Van Newhouse, very they said pick. that. They, they admitted very that. Pick. Um, you see, Ceballo is very well-spoken. Yes. He's a thoughtful guy in there. He's cerebral. Um, so you figure he's going to learn from this. But Definitely. as an observer, I've learned more about Ceballo because the first you know, five or six yes. fights of his career, I think I was there for five of them ringside for five of them probably yeah. called the action of th at least three of them he wasn't in tough enough for me to really assess yeah. if he could punch or not how good his chin was exactly or even what his style was i couldn't really decide like what do i call him i don't know if he's a boxer puncher um i, I think i was calling him like an a, 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 an occasionally aggressive athletic boxer yeah. Which is to say, I'm not quite sure what his style is, and I get the feeling, I could be totally wrong, he hasn't figured that out yet for himself. Is there a process in a, in a, a young professional's first 10 to 15 fights where he figures out, this is my style, this, this best suits me? Well, there's, there, there's one dilemma that he has, and I, I heard the team say it too. The chin's in the air. Right. Okay? Um, how you teach that, very simple, take an item like this, and you put the leaf of his chin, All right. and he's going to hold it. Right. Right? That's how you bring the chin down. Right. Um, they've been trying to work on it. Maybe they not didn't know it. Maybe they watched this footage and get the idea. Yeah. Um, I remember seeing boxers you know, hit the heavy bag with a tennis ball. Yes. Yeah, and they're just, they're they're just so stabbing, and they got the tennis ball. So I heard, <laughs> yeah, yeah. What I heard from his team <laughs> is they were trying to work on his, his chin in the air. And that's how he got caught. So now he's got to work on that because guess what? The future opponents are going to watch footage that you do that, and they'll try to do the same thing that he did. Of course. Yeah. So it makes suddenly sense. But I think Sabayo will fix the problem, okay? Should he, and coming out, remember also he's finding a man that's smaller than him. Yeah. Right? He's, he's a tall guy. Sabayo's a very big guy. I see that guy maybe going to middleweight or super middleweight. Really? Middleweight. Eventually. Eventually. You know, I would, I would agree with you if I saw more in the way of physical strength from Sabayo. With Sabayo, I see, I see the athleticism. I see speed and fluidity. I mean, he's like a dancer in there. But he's thick. I'm not seeing power, though, yet. I'm not, and I couldn't tell how strong he was against Fuentes. I know Fuentes was strong. He just has yeah. that build of a fire plug. As a matter of fact, I've got a, a tweet from somebody who used to train Randy Fuentes. Uh, this is from James Gogi. He's a, tr a trainer, a longtime trainer in the Texas area. And he says, I trained Fuentes for his first four fights. No amateur fights, just MMA fights. He was raw and green, had to really polish him up. Tough kid, never was scared to fight no one. So that was the mentality that fighter. Fuentes brought into this fight. 
And when you're in there with guys like that, they're yeah. more dangerous Very than guys dangerous. who might be have better experience or better skills who are not as confident as, the, as those guys. I mean, well, confidence is everything. Well, you'll take advantage of mistakes that Sabaya did. Sabaya did some mistakes that were evident, they were obvious, right? Yeah, and but Fuentes was experienced enough to where he could yeah. see them and do something about it. He capitalized. Right. And he knew he could capitalize. But you go straight back in line. So there's two things to me that Sabaya did that was wrong was the chin was in the air number one and he went straight back in the line and that's a rule even the great Muhammad Ali got dropped like that from Joe Frazier of course more, more than, than once straight back in the line yeah more than once so you don't go straight back in the line so there's some fixing some tweaking they got to do he needed that fight right he needed that fight really really bad because a spider southpaw number one and an awkward southpaw and a strong southpaw yeah and a guy that comes to fight Good lesson for him. Right. So we know what to look for the next time we call exactly. Brian's fights. We're going to see if that chin is tucked. And if the next time he's in with the lefty, we'll see if he gets his foot Put on the, on outside. the outside of the southpaw's yes. foot. Now let's switch our attention to the main event. Maricela Cornejo against Aaron Tohill. Aaron Tohill, and they don't like each other because a couple years ago they tried to make this fight. And for whatever reason, it didn't happen. And I think... Cornejo said some things on social media that Tohill didn't like, and so Tohill couldn't wait to get a chance to, to fight her again. But she's unretiring, and she hasn't boxed since 2006. Whew, that's a long time, and I know she stays in shape because she's got a gym in Orange County, and she trains boxing. But tell me, what was the longest stretch of inactivity that you ever experienced as a professional, and how did it affect you when you fought? Well... Um, I retired after being able to commentate. I got this KO Nation show. I remember KO Nation. In 2001. And I retired for two years because I couldn't train enough for the fights. Right. So I thought I was going to do both. But I had KO Nation. I had Rush One Radio. I had Heavyweight Explosion. Oh, so right. I had a lot of broadcasting at the same time. Right. So when I came back, you, you kind of you want to find where you was. It's like riding a bike. Right. You can ride a bike. And you go to ride a bike after three or four years. Even now, I'm a little awkward riding a bike. But the difference was I, I kind of settled in my ways a little bit. I trained hard, and I went right back to it, and I was okay. All right. Well, we're going to find out if Towhill can get back on that bike, and we're going to hear from Towhill and Maricela Cornejo, who spoke to Cynthia Conte after yesterday's weigh-in. Oh, I, I believe Cynthia is with one of the main event fighters right now. Everyone is still coming up to you, and you are... You are just an no, idol a, here at Fight that's Night. That's not a main event fighter. That, that's, that's a I great actor. He's a main Night event so actor. <laughs> I love Fight Night. And uh, I'm here because my good friend, Rondi Nicola, he's one of the 360 Promotions lawyers. Okay. And he said, want to have a good time? And he invited me. It's a great time. Okay. How, what do you think of the fight so far? Uh, Let me step down there. There we go. They're killing it. They are. They are. Which yeah. is your favorite fight so far? Uh, you know, if I name one fight, I leave out two. I can't do that. You love them all. So are you up to anything? Because everyone has been coming up to you. You're a legend. You're a great. What have? What? What do you have in store for us? What do you got? What do you still got going? IMDb.com. It'll tell you better than I can. <laughs> no, but do you want to do anything else? Come on, you can tell me. I know you got IMDb, but what else? You want to maybe help promote? <laughs> That'll, that'll, that'll promote for me. It'll tell you everything I'm doing and why better than I can. Okay. All right. Well, thank you, Eric, for taking the time out for us. You ready to see the main event, the girls? Yeah. Oh, these girls can bang. Just yeah. watch. It's gonna, I think it will be a better banger than all of these guys put together. Well, we'll see. We shall see. It is the time for me, too. It is. All right. Well, thank you so much for take uh, taking the time out. Enjoy Fight Nights. It's Hollywood Fight Nights. Let's box, bitches. That's my thing. All right, guys. Back to you. All right. All right, Kevin. I was wrong. I thought Cynthia was going to be interviewing Cornejo and Tohill. She was interviewing a great actor in Eric Roberts. I can't believe Eric Roberts is here. Okay. But now we have the interviews between Cynthia Conte and our main event fighters. I believe this was after yesterday's weigh-in. Hey everyone, I'm Cynthia Conte for 360 Promotions and look who I got here, Miss Towhill herself. Miss Erin Towhill, you are coming tomorrow night. Hollywood Fight Nights, it's your first time ever yeah. fighting on this card. Yes. And it's a main event for women. Correct. You're going up against Maricela. Yes. You both have something to prove. Why did you want this fight? Maricela is a great competitor. Um, I asked for the fight actually a few years ago, 
and it didn't materialize. And I knew if I was going to stay within boxing, I retired a little while ago. Everybody knows I haven't fought for a long time. I did two sports, I've had almost 30 professional fights to retire for personal reasons. But when I came back just to have fun, I knew that she might be somebody that I would want to go against. And then Chuck, Mr. Bosecker, he asked me about a month ago, he's like, would you like to fight her? And I said, yes. And now here we are. So, but I'd been training, you know, for the last five years. Yeah, because That's a lot of people have said she hasn't been in the ring for 13 years, I believe, but that you, you MMA, yeah. and she was American, American Gladiator, yeah, correct? American Gladiators, you know yes, yes. Ooh, I, know. I was a fan, I watched yeah, that. that was well, fun. what do you want to prove, what do you want to show your fans that haven't seen you in the boxing ring in so long professionally? Well, I think the more experience you have in boxing and the longer you're in this sport, and I've been in this sport 20 years, although I haven't fought in boxing since 06, my last MMA fight was eight years ago. I've always been in the sport. I'm a boxing coach. I train amateur fighters. Um, that's why I met one of my good sparring partners, Chelsea. I, I have nothing to prove. There's nothing to prove. I'm in here to do this for me. I'm going to have fun, and I'm going to do what I love to do, and that's fight and have her come to fight me. Oh, but, okay. you know, I know she's gonna, we're, we're in here for the fans. So it's like, I've been the main event many times before. Um, I fought all kinds of competitors. If you know who I am and you look at my background, it's, you know, my, I have uh, some nice accolades. So I'm just here, I'm in a different point in my life. I don't care what anyone thinks. You shouldn't, you should never. But well, do you, part of fighting, you know. Do you have any last fighting words before you go in the ring with Maricela tomorrow night? Um, I'm just here to have fun and do my job and I go hope you guys have an awesome time come and support either of us and women's boxing This is what we're here for. So thank you. Well, good luck to you tomorrow night and enjoy your first time on Hollywood fight nights thank Good luck you. to you. All right guys. Hey everyone. I am with Miss La Diva herself Marisela Cornejo. Did I get that right? You did. I got that rrr. Well, yeah that Tomorrow you're gonna give us that rrr and that sizzle because you're going into the you're going into the ring with a girl that called you out I think a couple years ago. She just said yeah. Toehill Aaron Toehill. She wants you. She has nothing to prove, but she says that you've got some skills What what do you want to show your fans tomorrow in the ring with her? Um, that it's going to be a great fight between both of us. I mean, she's coming in to fight. She has, like you said, nothing to lose. And she's going to come out uh, believing that she can beat me. So this, I'm not going into this fight just overlooking her, you know, years out of the ring that she has many years out of the ring. But, uh, um, yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited to get in there and have fun and show my fans what I was not able to do last fight. So... Yeah, t I remember the last fight. It was a lot, very emotional fight, but you're here tomorrow night. You are the main event. You're the very first female main event on Hollywood Fight Nights. Talk about how the, uh, how you feel when you heard you're going to be the main event. Um, main event or just fighting, truly, just fighting, getting in and, and uh, fighting again is, um, is always good. Um, being the main event, is, it's, it's awesome. It's awesome to be the main event, for women to be the main event. Even if it wasn't me, if it was another woman, I would be very happy. You know, I wanted to, um, there come a time where we don't say, oh, wow, it's a woman, you know, headlining or the, the card or, hey, there's a woman on TV. I, I want it just to be like, hey, there's fights on and it'd be a woman and it's not something so damn surprising. So I believe there's going to be a time for that. Um, Right now we're in a time of change, uh, and it's not going to happen overnight, but it's happening. So we got to keep the momentum going and show people, you know, once we do have the spotlight, show them a good fight. All right. Well, good luck to you tomorrow night. You. She's going up against Aaron Tohill. They're both going to go leave it in the ring all tomorrow night at Hollywood Fight Nights at Avalon Theater in Hollywood, California. Bye, guys. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we are set to go. Our featured bout of the evening, eight-round super welterweights. Ready to make her ring walk, fighting out of the red corner from Huntington Beach, California. Here is Aaron
All right. Finally, the main event is here. And hey, Tow Hill has fans. She's from the Orange County area. She's got a very, wow. We almost lost our, uh, our monitor there, but we see Tow Hill in the ring right now. She's got her fans, she's got her followers. And they are supporters. Yeah. And we know, I, and I know Cornejo has fans as well, so it should be a very lively audience as, as these two women middleweights go at it. It's going to be a great match. Yeah, and both of them weighed in, looked really good at the weigh-in. They both came in under the 160-pound limit, both weighed in at 158.8. Maricela Cornejo is used to fighting uh, in the super middleweight division, so she's dropping down. So that's something else she's got to be able to prove. And now her opponent is set a, a to make win, a ring walk. Finding, a, a finding it in the blue corner from L.A. Here is Maricela Cornejo! And now, ladies and gentlemen, live from the historic Avalon Theater here in Hollywood, California, it is time for the main event of the evening. Eight rounds of boxing this scheduled in the female middleweight division. Brought to you by Tom Lothers 360 Promotions and presented by Tecate, the official beer of boxing. Sanctioned by the California State Athletic Commission, the executive officer Andy Foster and chairman John Carvelli. Your three judges scoring at ringside, Wayne Hedgepath, Eddie Hernandez, and Fernando Villarreal. When the action begins inside the ring, referee in charge, Raul Caiz Jr. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the judges are ready, and the fighters are ready. Hollywood, California, make some noise if you are ready! Introducing you first. Fighting out of the red corner, wearing black, trimmed in gold. She weighed in officially 158 and three quarter pounds. In 11 professional bouts, her record, seven victories, three defeats and one draw. Fighting out of Huntington Beach, California. Here is Erin And across the ring stands her opponent, fighting out of the blue corner. Wearing solid white trunks tonight, she weighed in also 158 and three quarter pounds. In 15 professional bouts, her record outstanding with 12 victories, three defeats, five big wins coming by way of knockout, hailing from and fighting out of Los Angeles, California. Here is La Diva Maricela Ladies, you receive the instructions in the dressing room, know what I expect? A good, clean fight. Legal punches, here for you, trunks are low high. Here for you, trunks are low high. Touch gloves, good luck to both of you. Well, here's the tip of the tape. 31 to 41, age-wise, same height. Inch uh, reach a little bit high, but, you know, the age is what the factor is here. The Absolutely. age. Absolutely. Ain't no age is not just a number. <laughs> now when it comes to boxing. Toe Hill's wasting no time letting her hands go and letting her jab go. She connected with that right and got a reaction from Cornejo. Yeah, you know what's crazy? When you look at women this big live, you don't realize that these women are that size. Yep. 
these are some big girls. So I know on TV, you know, they may look a little thin, but they are solid, strong women. And with the size comes power. If somebody lands a really good shot. Um, I'll tell you. Hey, did I ever tell you that I, I once sparred with Leila Ali? At the LA Boxing Club? So you're still with me, I guess. <laughs> before, before she turned pro. And she was probably, you know, a solid 175, maybe even a 180. You know, she came down and wait. Oh, nice right hand. But hey, I felt it when she punched me. I'm a dude, but oh, yeah. I'm, not, I'm not a big guy. I felt it when she punched me. I sparred with Layla McCarter. Who, she's really good. She's, she's a very good fighter. She's still ranked, still like pound for pound yeah. ranked. She is a really good fighter. And Layla McCarter, I had to watch myself with her. Um, even with all my speed, I mean, I was on my A game with her. And she knows how to fight. She knows how to fight. So some of these girl fights, audience, don't take for granted. These girls really know how to fight. They do exactly what we do, train, training. They spar with some men, our top fighters in the world. We cut back a little bit, but let me tell you, some of them we can't cut back with. Where do you think Holly Holm came from? Holly Holm was a really good fighter. Oh, she was an excellent boxer. You know, it's with the 18-time world champion. Speaking of Layla Ali, Tohill, one of her final fights was against Layla Ali when Ali was 20 and 0, so she's not going to be intimidated by Ma Ma Maricela Cornejo. All right, let's toss to Cynthia Conte, who has another interview for us. Okay, guys, this is a trade. I have Miss Daisy Lang. If you don't know her, she's a 10 time world champion. You've got so many accolades. You are a pioneer in women's boxing, and you're here. The main event is a women's is is a is a woman's fight. Maricela versus Aaron Tohill. We were just talking about it. What do you see, and um, how do you see this fight panning out? Uh, first of all, I'm happy to be here to see a woman fight, and uh, I think Maricela need to be very careful. The first round, uh, she gets a lot of punches. She need to have her distance better and to use her job. Yeah. She has a great job, she needs to stay in distance, and I hope that the next round she will show that. Oh, yeah, and I also know that you also helped Cecilia Brekus for her fight, uh, for last, the last HBO fight. How, how empowering was that as a female to know that was the last fight? Yeah, oh, well, we're gonna have to wrap up, but you know what, let's just watch some fights and I'll get back. All right, enjoy your fight night. Thank you, bye guys, back to you. Round two, Cornejo versus Tohill, middleweights, scheduled for eight rounds. Who did you score the opening round for, Kevin? I gave the first round to, of course, Tornhill. Yeah. Uh, to, to, how do you say that again? Tohill. Tohill. I gave it to Tohill. I think Tohill is advancing. She's pressing action. She's throwing punches. This is called ring generalship right now. Okay? Marcella, she's not keeping Tohill. Tohill away from her. She's got to be at the end of the jab. Shella's just moving right now. It's called ring gentleship. So let me teach the audience something. Here you have two girls fighting, right? Now, which one looks like they're winning? <laughs> That's what it's based upon. Who looks like they're initiating action, they're applying pressure, because and positive pressure. You can apply pressure all day, but it has to be constructive pressure. So Tony Hill definitely He's doing a very good job right now. I agree with you. I scored round one for Aaron. <laughs> and you know, she had MMA fights, so she retired from boxing after 2006, but she continued to fight mixed martial arts for at least a few years, like into the 2010s, right? Yeah. Well, and one thing I noticed in the MMA fights, I looked some of them up on YouTube, her stand-up game, you could tell she had really good boxing technique, and it was also evident in her fight against Layla Ali. That was in 2005, and that was actually on the undercard of Mike Tyson's final fight against Kevin McBride. So she's fought on some pretty big platforms. She's not going to be intimidated fighting Cornejo, even though Cornejo has twice fought for a world title. Well, Cornejo right now is, is getting a little bit punished. Um, Toriel is doing her job. I'm telling you, she's working on her. I'll give her this round also.
Kevin, what advice would you give to Cornejo if you're working a corner right now? Cornejo, I would tell her, step to the side and throw a right hand. Step to the side of the right hand and hook. And come back to the jab. Right hand, hook, back to the jab. Right. Step to the side. Stop stepping backwards because it takes more energy from you stepping backwards. That's how you get tired. If you watch a lot of boxing matches, when a guy gets going backwards, it's harder to go backwards than go to the side. See, like right now, she's spending a lot of energy, okay, by going backwards. Round three, the fight is moving fast. These are two minute rounds, because this is women's boxing. They go quick, so if you don't get involved early, you can find yourself behind, just like I'm right now. I think Marcella is behind. Toe Hill, I got her winning 2018. I want to get the last two rounds. Um, right now, to me, Marcelli's not doing enough. She's not doing enough. She's not letting her hands go. I said it, and she did it just now. Cornejo needs more moments like that. That was a nice little shoe shine to the body. But she needs to do that with more consistency. What she needs is conviction. She has no conviction. You see. When you're looking at her in the corner, she looks like she's avoiding the fight rather than winning the fight. So then it's called ring gentleship. So that's what the judges are watching right now. They're watching that she's not trying to engage. Definitely, I would say Toe Hill has the better jab. And because of that nice, stiff, straight jab, she finds a, a place for her straight right. Yeah, well, Toe Hill is right now being the aggressor, and she's throwing a lot of punches, and she's advancing. The biggest key is that as this fight goes on, you're going to see that Marcella, she's going to fatigue. It's Like I said, it's very hard to do what she's doing right now. Kevin, were you ever in fights where you had no choice but to back up? You still won? Well, I did it myself and stepped to the side. That's why I know. Right. Troy Dorsey. <laughs> yeah. Troy Dorsey. I mean, you can't stop him from coming. You have to step to the side. that toe hill slowing down a little bit here. Uh, so when I said that, she's a little combination. Um, I tell you what, if toe hill does slow down, Cornejo needs to take advantage of it, and she needs to be more active. And I, I tell you what, I expected more activity from Cornejo because she's been the more active boxer. Yeah. I mean, she's been fighting, and all this time that toe hill's been out of the ring, Maricela has been in the ring, and she fought four times in 2018. Well, Toe looks like she's more <laughs> was more active than Marcelli. Oh, she does. She, she it doesn't seem like she's coming off this 11-year absence from the boxing ring. We got to find out psychologically why did Marcelli decide to step backwards in this fight? Why she's, you know, she played the passive one. Right now, Toe is very aggressive. She she's like confident one, and you can see she's trying to land shots and good shots and overhand rights, okay, on Maselli. I would say right now, at least in my opinion, the best punch of Toe Hill has been her jab. Yeah, Maselli's allowed her to, a lot of opportunity here, and she's taking advantage of it. I give her, uh, Toe Hill a lot of credit. I 
was a nice counter right hand, landed somewhat in retreat by Cornejo. Yeah, it's, it's only Cornejo one. Cornejo going back to the body. She needs to do more of that. That was borderline, and she gets a warning from the referee. Round five of a scheduled eight round middleweight bout between Maricela Cornejo and Aaron Tohill. And Kevin, you and I aren't the only folks that are impressed with uh, Tohill and want to see more from Cornejo. Latin, Latin Box Sports tweets, Cornejo needs to take more risk and punch with the puncher. Tohill being first, being the aggressor at the end of round three. And I think uh, she, that, that held for round four. I scored round four for, uh, for Tohill. Although I will admit, round four was more competitive than the previous three. Yeah, well, like I said, I got it scored unofficially, of course, 37-40. I got Tohill winning the fight right now. Uh, she's more aggressive. She's throwing more punches. Um, it just seems that like now, it seems that Marcelli is throwing punches and attacking. Yeah, I think this is a good place for, for Cornejo to be. She's the younger woman by 10 years. She looks strong. I think it's good for her to stay in the pocket and press the older woman against the ropes, work the body, work combinations. She's a bit squared up in front of Tohill, but I mean, she's being effective right now. Yeah, Tohill right now is taking a submissive stance in this boxing match right now. So, like, this is what I was talking about. Who's gonna lead the fight? A boxing match is like a dance. Nice, that was a nice left to the body from Cornejo. Just missed lead. with the right uppercut, but it seems like she's more comfortable chest to chest, head to head, than Tohill is. Tohill's trying to work the body in, in return right now. And now Tohill's trying to push. She's trying to push. Nice right hand landed by Tohill. Cornejo comes back with her own right hand, follows it up with the left hook. Six between Cornejo and Tohill. This is scheduled for eight rounds in the middleweight division. Got another tweet here. This is from Marcos Villegas. He says Cornejo needs to work the body more, make the older fighter work and up her work rate. I agree with Marcos, and I believe Cornejo did that in round five, and I scored round five for Cornejo. Yeah, I, I gave it to her too. Um, I got it scored 47-49 officially, of course. Close fight. Close fight. Um, Conejo now is starting to fight the fight. 
But guess what? Tohill is taking initiative again. So this is going to be a very, very close fight. And it keeps going the way it's going right now. Yeah, Tohill has a lot of pride. It doesn't matter what type of combat sport it is, whether it's boxing or kickboxing or, or MMA. She, she fights with a lot of passion. And maybe she felt herself that she lost that last round, so she's trying to atone for that. She's coming out hard here in round six. Yeah, here she go picking up the punches, throwing more punches. She's throwing a jab and trying to step a right hand right behind it. Here go the right hand. They both exchange. And Conejo, like I said, is on retreat. Renejo is jabbing better as she moves around the ring. She wasn't doing that in the first uh, three rounds. It's like they say in boxing. Conejo right now is fighting off a back leg. Right. And what I mean by fighting off a back leg is she's dragging the back leg, trying to draw Toe Hill in. But when Toe Hill gets inside, she doesn't do anything. And that's what's lacking. Starting to see the fatigue on the face of Aaron Toe Hill. Starting to see the age in, 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 in that her reflexes aren't as fast as they probably need to be to catch her. Begins round seven, snapping her jab. We didn't see that early in the fight, so she's definitely in her rhythm. And I think the fight is definitely heated up. It's way more competitive now. It makes me either wish that they were fighting three minute rounds or that it was a 10 rounder. Yeah, what's amazing about this whole fight, Toe Hill looks sharper to me than Marcelli. She looks way sharper. I think Toe Hill technically is sharper. I think her reflexes are a little bit slower, however. But let me tell you something. You gotta tell that to Marcella who's getting hit by them. Well, that's true too. <laughs> so, so realistically, Toe Hill may have been off all this time, but she does look very accurate. That's a nice lead right attempt from Cornejo. Look at the legs on Toe Hill. You like the footwork from Toe Hill? Uh, she's doing amazing things. She's not fatigued, she's not tired. You know, you expect less from Toe Hill, but she's doing more. Well, I think she's at her best from this range right here, on the outside, working the jab as she stalks. I think, think mid-range, she puts herself in the line of Cornejo's punches, and I think in close, on the inside, she gets outworked by Cornejo. I think the best distance is at arm's length, but it's, it's good for her to come forward. Yeah, look at the footwork that she's doing. Would you say that Toe Hill is cutting the ring off? She's doing nice things. She's stepping around and throwing combinations. Judges look at stuff like that to see who's in charge. It's called ring generalship, and that's what they're looking for. And that's something I actually noticed in her MMA fights during the stand-up motion. Yeah. She's got it.
This turned into a very good girl fight. Let me tell you something. This fight turned out to be very well matched with styles. You know, you throw with a 10 years age difference in the age, that'll make a difference. That didn't that didn't play out. If somebody told me this before the matchup, with a with a layoff like Tohel's had and everything combined, I would have said no way. But she impressed me. Nice left hook from Cornejo. She needs more. She, she needs more of that. She needs combinations. I feel Cornejo needs to win this eighth and final round in order to have a chance to win this fight. You're right. On my scorecard, like yours, very unofficial. I've got Tohill ahead. I got Tohill ahead also. 65-69. Uh, one round even. Um, Tohill is landing nice combinations. The judges are watching this. And on top of it, Marcelli's going backwards. So... Active aggression, ring generalship. Phil Cornejo is landing some punches in retreat, though. That was a nice right hand she landed a moment ago. Yeah, oh, there she just ate a right hand. Yeah, she got countered right here. So it's, this round is back and forth, forth and back, as they say. Um, very competitive round. Ladies know they got to win this round. And I really think it's up to the younger fighter to be the busier fighter in here, though, and real, to outwork the woman who's 10 years older. I really do. Plus, I think the younger woman is behind on the scorecard, so yeah. it would behoove her to really work hard. Just empty the tank. She don't look 10 years younger, older than Priscilla. So ain't that crazy? This has been a good final round, and the crowd is responding. All right, Kevin. How do you, tell us how do you have it scored? I hate giving double rounds where I put 10-10. Ten, ten. Are you wait? You had two even rounds? I got right, two even. Did, rounds. Wait, let me let me guess. You only allowed one. But, okay, the eighth round you scored even. Did uh, you? I eighth round I scored even. I okay. had. I was stuck. I also scored. I went ahead and gave the eighth round to Towhill. She was the aggressor. It was very close yeah. though. Round four, I gave it that even. Round eight. Oh, that's right. And, and I also scored round four for Towhill. Now. If we both agree that rounds four and round eight are could have been even, it might be possible that one or two of the official judges could have scored round four or round eight for Cornejo. Yeah, could it be. Now those could be what you call swing rounds. I got him scored 75-79. I got Tohill winning either way. Uh, listen, I think she deserves to win. She went out there and she earned it. She puts her hand in the air and the crowd yeah. reacts. So Tohill, to me, in my scorecard, doesn't lose anyway. So it depends on what the judges saw and what they say. And we'll find out soon. Cornejo seems confident. She nods to her fans. And this is Librato Andrade in, in, in front of us right now giving a hug to, to Cornejo. He's uh, part of Toe Hill's Corner, and he's a former uh, super middleweight contender. I know him very well. Oh, he's, yeah, he's in Vegas now, right? He used to, yeah, be in, Vegas, used to be in Vegas. And he used to train with Wade McCullough's gym. All right, Joe Martinez, he's got the particulars. He will tell us who won this fight. Well, ladies and gentlemen, after eight rounds of boxing, we go to the judges' scorecards one more time. Put your hands together for both of these fighters inside the ring tonight. And here are the judges' totals. Both Wayne Hedgepeth and Fernando Villarreal have it 79-73. Eddie Hernandez, 78-74. All for your winner by unanimous decision from Los Angeles, California, La Diva Maricela
war between you, Aaron Tohill, and Maricela Cornejo. Congratulations. You put up one hell of a fight, both of you. First and foremost, you have not been in the ring officially in front of everyone in an official box match in 12 years. How do you feel right now? How did it feel just in front of your family, in front of your fans? Of course it feels great to be back, you know, and thank you, Maricela, for taking the fight. Um, I'd love to have a rematch, you know. I think it was a lot closer than what the judges are saying. I saw someone else's scorecards and it had me like five and her three. So, I mean, I'm gonna be gracious in defeat. Congratulations to her, she earned the win. Um, I'm bummed, I'm really bummed, I'm sad right now, but this is fighting and hopefully I get, you know, a rematch with her. I think I'll be better next time considering I haven't fought boxing in 12 years, so. What did you find? What did you find impressive about her? And what did you find something that you didn't even know about that Marisa? Because she went down in weight for this fight. Yeah. But in general. That's not a big thing for women. That's pretty easy, actually. So, you know, she fought at middleweight before. I did, too, a long time ago. Um, I knew she came to fight. Come on. It's like, I know when we get in here, that's what we do. So. You guys had some great phone, book, phone booth fighting. I saw those uppercuts. It was yeah, I did like on her, the counters for that, but I should have, I mean, I can sit here, but in the inside, I should have thrown a lot more. On the outside, I felt okay mid-range, but in the inside, I should have done a lot more. You were the aggressor in the, in the sixth, seventh, and eighth, and I started turning her in. Well, hopefully we do get another rematch, but thank you, thank you for making your debut for at Hollywood Fight Night. It, it was a great main event, and you were the very first female here for Hollywood Fight Night. You guys give it up for Aaron Tohill, please. Maricela La Diva Cornejo. Did I get that? I love saying that. You came out here, you needed to prove. To prove to yourself, to prove to your fans, to prove just to yourself that you could do this. You did it. How do you feel right now? What, what, what are your thoughts? What's going on through your mind? Well, first and foremost, uh, I told you guys, I told everybody, like 12 years out of the ring, whatever, she's, she's teaching it and outside of the ring, you see much more when you're teaching boxing truly. And I was not gonna look past her. She's a very talented athlete. She's all around MMA, kickboxing, all that. I mean, hello, she's a freaking athlete. I knew she was gonna come to fight. She's very, uh, you know, she's set on what she is doing. And it was, it was such a fun fight. It was truly a fun fight because you have that mutual respect. And even in there, I think I caught her way too low. And I, while we're exchanging, punching each other, I'm like, I'm sorry. And she's like, it's okay. And I'm, it's just so crazy. That's what I love about boxing. And it's an honor to be in the ring with a fellow athlete like that, a professional, a true professional, um, that we both come to fight. You know, from the very beginning, she was the aggressor. You were the one backing up into the ring, into the corners. But you were the one leaning, uh, cleaning, excuse me, landing the cleaning, cleaner punches. There was at one point in the beginning, you kept your hands low and you were getting caught. We, were no we noticed that. Did you notice that? Um, in the beginning, I was getting caught? Yeah, I, I mean, I mean, yeah, I, 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 truly, I wanted, to, I wanted to feel the, the power on her. And she's a big girl and, and she, yeah, she has, she has a, a packed uh, punch, but I was just trying to get comfortable in there with my, with my head movement and telling myself, and there's a lot of things that my mind and body was not uh, following each other, so uh, it's a learning experience, and it, it was it was a good fight. I love the pressure, and we that's one thing that I told you from the beginning. It's like they're gonna come out pressuring and aggressive and aggression. So it was just sticking to our plan, and we were expecting that, and um, allowing her to you know to do that, to spend the energy on hunting me down, and just sticking to our plan and staying calm through the punches. And that's the most difficult part is staying calm. As in the seventh round, that was actually your best round of the evening. That's my personal opinion. You kept that aggression. You kept pushing and you, came, you became victorious. And what did your corner tell you? They have to be telling you something in your ear to keep, to keep going. To, to punch more, to punch more. I was just watching a bit, I caught myself just watching a bit more on uh, just seeing what she was doing and then that's where, you know, you gotta not worry so much about what they're doing and fucking go out there and throw your damn punches. What, how do you rate her, her power? She's up there, she's up there. 
One, one girl I've, I always say that she punches like a damn mule and she's a smaller Rosicladi. She's, she's a, a junior Olympic. Uh, so she, that girl can sack a punch. You just made history for Hollywood Fight Nights. You, became, you were the first women's event as the main event. What do you want next, Marisela? Who do you want and what do you want next now that you're at the middle, uh, middleweight? Um, well, super welterweight. I'm going to be going down to super welter. Yeah, 154. So for this fight, I could have waited at 154. Um, the night of the weigh-ins, I was drinking like a 32-ounce gallon or uh, thing of coconut water. I could have easily made 154. Um, weight's not a problem. And uh, just continue to work on what I need to do and, and uh, be confident in it. And I want to thank everyone here, my pastors, <laughs> Janae, my roommate, my, my best friend, Nancy. I love you. Thank you so much. She just had her uh, um, pass away last night, so prayers go out to her and her family. And uh, everybody, thank you so much for your support and uh, looking forward to do it again. Do you want that rematch with Franchon Cruz Desern? She's super middleweight. She's super I mean, would you go back up and wait for that belt? To get slammed again? No, thank you. Well, got to ask. I mean, if she comes down to 154, I'll be more than happy. I'm looking forward to anybody truly on the weight classes. And... I really can care less what they freaking say of like that I'm making excuses. I know my truth and that's all that I can freaking stay with. And uh, they're talking about me, so they're paying attention to, at me. And at the end of the day, that's what matters. There you guys go. La Diva Maricela Cornejo, congratulations. She stated it. Franchon, if you want that rematch, come down and wait. She'll meet you. Why are you shit? I'm not talking shit. I'm just saying. <laughs> Give me a good banger, you know. Congratulations, what a great main event. Thank you guys, and thank you to the team, and Nancy, great job. Everyone, thank you, thank you, thank you for coming out to Hollywood Fight Nights. It was a fun fight night, and you know what? Kevin Kelly, Dougie Fisher, you guys take it away. You guys wrap up the night. I'm Cynthia Conti for 360 Promotions. Let's box, bitches. See you guys at fights. Bye, guys. All right. <laughs> thank you very much, Cynthia. All right, Kevin. Final final thoughts on Cornejo versus Toehill. I didn't see it that way. I, I thought that Aaron won the fight. Yeah, you and I both disagreed um, with the official judges. We disagreed. I would like a rematch. Right. I don't know why that wasn't pronounced, but I would like a rematch. I think I'm just curious. Me. There's a guy named Nick Sanchez says, I don't know what fight these judges were watching. No way Aaron lost. At the very least, a draw. And I would agree with that. If you yeah. gave that those swing rounds, rounds four and round eight, yeah, yeah, eight to Cornejo on my card, then it's it's still a draw. But uh, a good showing. I mean, a, a, a good outcome for Cornejo. A very good showing for Toehill. I would like to see Toehill back. And, of course, I wouldn't mind seeing uh, Cornejo back at the weight that she wants to get to, which is junior middleweight. And I think there's probably uh, more competition for her the lighter she gets uh, within the women's boxing ranks. Yeah, I like the way the... the the armies of the card, the armies of this room. I do like the, the fight in this room. Um, a rematch could definitely happen again. That's sure. what makes boxing great. But, you know, the thing is, like I said, you know, things happen in boxing. It's something you don't like. But guess what? We can redo it. Do it over. <laughs> like knocking them over, let's do it over. So tonight was a great night of festivities, I think. I think the fights were very good. We saw a lot of young and upcoming talent. Right. Now, were there any talent that stood out to you? Obviously, we saw Brian Ceballo get up from the first knockdown of not only his pro career, but his amateur career, and get the W. Was there anybody um, in the first three bouts, the, the club fighters? Definitely. Best fighter of the night to me was George Navarro. Uh -huh. The kid from New York City, yeah. Golden Glover. Um, hell of a fighter. I yeah. think really talented coming up. Um, I was shocked about Brian Ceballo. I was shocked. Um, he had to step it up, and he, he was okay. He survived. He survived. But... I am really was impressed by George Navarro. So best fighter tonight, George Navarro. All right, I'm going to give my uh, gold star to Christian Robles. I love his form. It's early to tell. It's just been his second pro fight, but I think he can be developed into a legitimate uh, prospect, and he's got good people good behind him Definitely with Brian Valoria, obviously. So hey, great working with you. Thanks. And, and everybody, just so you know, the, you know, this is my first time being the blow-by-blow, the play-by-play -blow, -play guy. So. I was a little bit awkward, a little bit tight, but you made it fun, Kevin. Thank you. And the way we talk is just the way we talk off camera. Yeah. It's, it's not just a pleasure to work with you, but it's an honor. Um, I can't wait to do it again. So on behalf of the Flushing Flash, Kevin Kelly, Cynthia Conte, 
our, our excellent production staff over here, Tom Loeffler and everybody at 360 Promotions. We will see you in March. Good night, everybody.